Hello, everybody, and welcome to Let's Endure Fuck You Machinima. Tonight, I'm joined by the stupendous Shot and Fraulein. Woo! Uh, the radical Rad Rad. Hey there, how's it going? The fabulous Freddy Fazfuck. Ah, come on, what do you mean I got fired from Machinima? This is fucking <laughs> bullshit. And last but not least, pee pants Fred. Ha! <laughs> There's pee in them. <laughs> um, uh, play. All right, what is going on, everyone? Dark Side Phil here. Welcome to a special vlog. This vlog, um, I really didn't know if I was ever gonna be making anything like this. Ooh, quite honestly, um, twenty minutes of that, story. I'm the ready. This is my of favorite the time part. That I have been doing uh, YouTube for a living. For the contradictions. Making money doing YouTube videos and or live myself. streaming. You know, doing this kind of thing as my job. Oh. Uh, I was partnered with a company, an MCN, one of these big partnership networks on YouTube called Machinima. Okay. And I partnered with Machinima way back when, in early 2011. This was at a time when very few YouTubers were monetizing gameplay videos. In fact, at that time, it was a very tumultuous time where the game videos <laughs> on YouTube were very tumultuous. popular, but a lot of them would constantly be hit with copyright strikes and issues, and it was kind of a very iffy scenario if people would ever be able to make money doing it. I was actually one of the people who was considered the pioneer of making video uh, video gameplay on YouTube <laughs> and monetizing it and being That's able who? to make a living who says doing that? it. A lot of people saw He's me the and said, oh shit. Phil was able to find a partnership, and he was able to monetize his gameplay videos because he was with this partnership, uh -huh. and they kind of jumped along with it, too. And now here we are, you know, some six-plus years later, and YouTube is absolutely flooded with thousands of people doing gameplay videos on a daily basis that are monetized. It was kind of cool being there at the very beginning of this whole movement on YouTube of monetizing gameplay videos and doing it for a living, okay? Okay. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because after a six-year partnership with Machinima, it was just about one month a ago legacy, you would that say? I basically severed my ties with the company. Oh, and you yeah, severed it? Yeah, there was some it. little red tape I had to jump you through there. You severed I had to wait it? No. The I'm pretty that sure I had they severed you. YouTube channels, DSP Gaming, and also KO they Gaming like kind of turd. expire, and oh. KO Gaming just expired about a week ago. Expired? But now I am completely free from them. I am actually <laughs> now partnered with different a different company on YouTube, okay? And a lot of people want to know why. A lot of people want to know what happened, Phil, because you've been with this company for six years. And it's funny because when I partnered with Machinima back in 2011, they were actually known as one of the major heavy-hitting partnership companies on YouTube. They were one of those pioneering companies that allowed gamers to and fucking time pioneers, to put advertisements dude. on their video gameplay Relax. and make money doing it. So they were huge. And then over the years, I hate to say it, I mean, I'm just being matter-of-fact here, the <sighs> reputation of Machinima kind of went down and down and down and down over the years for various different reasons. Now, the good news is... For me, I was never really affected by any of that yeah, you were negativity or controversy because mm -hmm. I wasn't a f in any of the stuff that was controversial. I'll give you a, a, some perspective here. There was a one point several years ago when the Xbox One first released that they had a campaign, if you were with Machinima like I was, if you made videos covering the Xbox One and you put certain like tags and stuff in your videos and you were only positive about the console, like you had to be super positive about the console and all of that, then you would get paid extra money from Machinima, okay? okay? The problem was they didn't have anyone disclose in their descriptions of their videos or even in the videos that basically those videos were overly positive paid advertisements, which actually is a violation of United States law. So Machinima ended up getting in a ton of trouble because of this, because they brought in all this money ad revenue from Microsoft, right? All this 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 program revenue from Microsoft for advertising their console to your positively. Job. I don't when they never this. disclosed to any of the viewers that it was paid advertisements, and they had to pay a settlement so like shit out to of the United States with. government in order to, to get out of that. Okay? okay, so they're scumbags, right? I was a person, I was never affected by any of that, because I didn't participate fired, in though. that stuff. Yeah. My coverage on YouTube, on Twitch, has always been considered 100% independent. You're never going to see a paid advertisement from me, or if it is one ever, you'll know it is, because I'll tell you up front, or it'll definitely list it in the description of the video, or both, okay? I would never, ever, to make a dollar, do something like that, and try no? to, um, 
try to pull the wool over your eyes or be dishonest with you and not let you know that what I'm telling you in a video is my honest opinion or my honest take or honest gameplay. I would never do that. Mm. Other YouTubers have been doing it for a long time and you may not even realize some of the bigger YouTubers you watch do this all the time, but I would never do that, okay? And I never have. Somebody okay. save that clip um, just in case. So, all this controversy no, and the negativity that yes, seems to have been surrounding Machinima and been involved with Machinima, I kind of was never affected by it because I never was involved with any of that controversy. But I have heard things over the years. Machinima was getting worse. And did you hear what they did here or there? Every once in a while, I get pinged by someone. Ping. And I say, Phil, did you hear this, this big thing about Machinima? I'd be like, no. Because all I do, I sit here, I stream, I record, I upload. That's it. That's the extent of my relationship with them. They send me a paycheck, and that's it. Okay? <clears throat> now, over the years... Machinima has definitely fallen from grace. Oh. People have uh, basically said, you know, what is go you know, what is going on with this company? How could they change so much? A lot of people tell me that a lot of the shows that Machinima used to be known for, popular YouTube shows and stuff they used to do, they're gone. They laid off the people or fired the people who used to be on these popular shows. And so a lot of people are very upset with Machinima for various reasons. I've heard horror stories of people who had this relationship with Machinima. They couldn't get out of their Machinima contract or this or that. All this kind of stuff going on. I never had that relationship with Machinima ever. I never had this negativity. So for me, my, my experience for the vast majority of time that I was with Machinima was a very positive one, all right? But obviously something changed and something happened because I'm not with them anymore. And a lot of it has been a ton of speculation over this past month. What specifically happened with Phil? Why is he, of all people, Phil's been like the, the one guy who stayed with Machinima the longest and he stuck up for them. Why the hell did they, is Phil not with Machinima anymore? Did he get fired? Did he choose to leave? Yes. The bottom line is you can't fire me because I never worked for them. Okay? You can't fire um, me! And what? I see idiots making what? videos like that. DSP fired. <laughs> I was never working for Machinima to begin with. I was in what was called a... You got a paycheck from um, them. Of course a partnership agreement. For them. It's an at-will agreement, meaning that both sides need to agree to want to have this relationship business-wise. And at any time, it could have been severed by me or by Seriously, them. Seriously, Phil, what the hell okay. would you call monetary um, compensation from them? And it kind of was a mutual thing, which I'm going to explain in a moment. Oh, but it was mutual. Yeah. It was certainly a weird thing, too. And what I want to do now is, in, in this video, and I know it's going to probably go long... I want to tell you about my experiences with Machinima over the years, all right? I can't disclose any specific contractual f facts or figures. I can't tell you how much money I made with them or anything like that whatsoever. But I can speak in general terms, all right? I can't okay. give you numbers, but I can tell you about maybe certain things they did uh, over the years oh, that kept right. me with them. Weird things that happened behind the scenes with staffing. Because the bottom line is Machinima is one of the most tumultuous, chaotic... And quite honestly, just amalgamous companies that I've ever worked with. In amalgamous? My life. From the day that I partnered with Machinima to like a few months after, to a year after, to a year after, to a year after, that that company just kept changing constantly. New staff, new initiatives, new focuses, new drives, new new things that were dictated to the partners that they had to do. Then all of a sudden, within a whim, it would just be completely forgotten. I, uh, messages that would be sent out in general to the partners covering major games that made no sense because it didn't even make sense per let's play criteria for the things that they were saying. I'll give you some examples uh, during the course of this video. Like one, one example would be when Grand Theft Auto V came out, Machinima sent out an email to all the partners saying you should play the game with no music and you shouldn't put any cutscenes in your let's play. And everyone's like, what? Like, are you stupid? Like, that's the point of a Let's Play, is to have a legitimate coverage of the game. If you have no cutscenes, you're only doing not even a Let's Play. You're just basically doing a highlight. It's like barely every, anything to and say right now. everyone was planning to do a full Let's Play Grand Theft Auto blabbing. 5. And no other partnership network all... sent out this kind of notice to their partners. Bullshit. Why did Machinima do it? And this is what I mean. <laughs> Machinima would have these weird initiatives and weird directives and that they would do. And then they'd abandon them all suddenly. Like, and it was just so bizarre. So, so allow times. me to give you the full There's story. Let's no all start way back when in 2010. In late 2010, I had been doing YouTube for two years as a hobby. I had never made a penny doing it. I had no intentions of making money doing it. I just liked making videos of and my gameplay that's, that's for fun and putting like them I on said, the internet and getting attention myself. for it. It was fun and seeing what? people excited and contacting me and me getting popularity on Aww. the internet for something that I really enjoyed, being a gamer, a lifelong gamer, all right? Um... It wasn't intended that I would get laid off from my job in 2010. You know, I had an office job for almost five years. I was getting commendations at this job, and then within two months they laid me off. Not you know, this believe fucking that. shit again. Another case of another company doesn't I don't know what believe the fuck the they're doing. And by the way, that all. company I used to work for is pretty much on its last legs and almost out of business. Oh, uh, well, fuck there, them, right, Phil? Yeah. And they're Why don't basically you just go gone. look somewhere so, else. Then, signs of the times when you have someone who you think is a great employee. Fuck them. You fucking. 
compliment them, you give them commendations, you lay them off, and within three, four years, your company is done. Right. Yeah. But I digress. You sure should. I was them, left though. in a, a rock and a hard place. I, there's nothing I could do. I had no money in coming in, no income at all. And the job industry, especially in Connecticut back then, was horrible. There was no way I was going to get another job of the same level of what I had, paying what I had, in any kind of a short amount of time. There was no way even getting two, three part-time jobs that I'd be able to make enough money to keep my condo, to pay my car payments, and to do all, pay all my bills, basically. You know, I if he keeps doing this for like a few more years, so gradually said, his story will get longer and longer, and it'll work. be like I tried two hours I tried doing video. regular AdSense on my vlogging channel because back then you couldn't monetize gameplay videos. It wouldn't be allowed. Really so I tried just monetizing just my vlogs. That didn't work out. Then I tried going to a different side. That didn't work out. Finally, <clears throat> finally I was on my wit's end. And this funny thing had actually happened in late 2010 that led to me being partnered with Machinima. A lot of people don't know this story. There was a person named Hutch who... Basically, he was doing gameplay videos on YouTube. He was scouted by Machinima. Okay. He had interaction. I guess maybe he got partnered with them or whatever. And he ended up actually becoming hired by them, employed by them. And he moved to California, and he was working for them. He was in videos for them, all kinds of stuff. At one point, I guess either I had said something in a vlog that pissed Hutch off, or Hutch had said something in one of his videos, and someone asked me about it on one of my Q&A shows. And I, I want to learn about him or Machinima, about me. Not I don't even remember life. what this happened. But basically, we had beef. There was a big disagreement in 2010 between the two of us. And at that point, to see two big games, he's telling you going about the it was actually a big thing. And we the were dance. excited to see us go back on everything. Drama, right? um, it ended up. It was a misunderstanding. <laughs> I actually don't at this point don't even remember what the fuck the disagreement was about at all. No. Then why did you bring it up? You old emails or whatever. I think it was actually private messages on YouTube back then. Because by then, back then, people actually use private and direct messages on YouTube. Not anymore. I haven't used one in like fucking five plus years but back then they were used and implemented um and we had a dialogue back and forth and basically we came to the conclusion that it was a misunderstanding and or there was no reason for beef and we kind of left on amicable terms almost being mutually respectful of each other oh yeah, yeah. i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna pause because i'd like to actually bring something up to the panel in general uh oh i believe that the reason phil does not name drop certain people is because he does not have the full story deep in his head, so he is worried that his words will be taken out of context. Do you guys remember that journalist from Kotaku? Oh, you mean where, where he completely fabricated the story? Where he took his words out of context. No, no, no. He... You mean when he completely fabricated the story? I covered this. The guy said to him, "Hey, all I, you know, a lot of people dislike you. You know, all I did was tweet you, and a lot of people swooped in. Now, what's up with that?" Phil says, "Yeah, I got reached out to this journalist. He said, man, what's up with these kids? Like, and I can tell they're kids because just look at their thought strings. It's just the most acidine things ever. Are they mentally ill? Like, what's wrong with them?" Yeah, you mean the one where he fabricated it from scratch? Yeah, that one, Red Red? Patrick exactly. Klepek? Yeah. And yes. then the guy who does TED Talks on, like, internet language and shit and trying to, you know, not fucking say derogatory things to people online, because I guess that's his bag, to not to be nice to people and not say inflammatory things, he decided to fucking take Phil to task and show the recording of that exact question. And then Phil's like, oh, I wouldn't say that I'm hated. I would say I'm the most derided. And the reason I say that, and then it cuts off. Yeah, that. Yeah. Please continue. I so after I lost my job. No, I meant continue with the story, not continue with the fucking... <laughs> Wait, pause it. Wait, what were you going to There we say? go. That, that's even better. <laughs> What yes, you see, you said continue with it. I thought but I'm trying I, to. I thought you. Were, I wasn't gonna just truck you like that. I mean, shit. Give me some credit here. Yeah, but what I'm trying to say is that that incident scarred Phil, and he hesitates to raise examples and names because he's worried he will get something wrong, and people who keep tabs on his every word, his every dialogue. We'll call him out on it. Oh, yeah. It's just not all of them have the luxury of having the fucking master recording that they can bring out to absolve themselves and to fucking, you know, fucking <laughs> show the actual conversation that Phil fabricates here. That guy, you know what? I didn't know. I had no idea he was going to do some shit like that. But boy, oh boy, did he hit Phil with the woo-wop on that one because... Phil had nothing to say about that. He had to just be like, oh, yeah, I guess uh, my apologies, you know. He actually had, yeah, he had to release a video apologizing. Yeah, it's fantastic. 
Yeah, he kind of made this face when he found out that the guy was pissed. Yeah, oh. that was his reaction yeah. when when the fucking uh, when that uh, what was it a SoundCloud clip came out. He's like, oh, whoopsie daisies. <laughs> Yeah, he he shut his mouth real fast after that. Oh, the 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 uh, the the tape recorder was on. It was on the whole time, huh? And I think he's been doing that ever since, unless he has something concrete. Um, yeah, I mean, he'll call out somebody by name if he has something right then and there in the moment. Some sound bite, some some little clip like Alpha Omega Sin or some shit like that. Uh, he'll he'll go for that one, but. Yeah, he'll he'll either stay as vague as possible and just be like, oh, yeah, we had some beef and I don't even remember what it was. So that he doesn't seem like he's putting his foot in his mouth, you know. Yeah. That's the old adage. A man who never lies never has to keep his story straight. Mm. And Phil's got a lot of stories he's got to try and straighten out. He's got eight years worth. Mm. Speaking of years, this is also the individual we're speaking of that absolves that um, I'm trying to find the word he denies he invalidates if you dare mention something that is beyond a certain stature of limitation ah he does do that it's invalid right if it's that's too old to be relevant I mean it's it's completely irrelevant and therefore not worth my time but, you know, when Machinima fucked up in 2010, let's talk about that. Look, right. I, totally sl I totally slandered this reporter, but dude, I won fourth place at a tournament 12 years ago. Oh, yeah. That's relevant. Him being a pioneer, quote-unquote, I guess is relevant. You know? Yep. I just so wanted to kind of get that out there. That this is definitely a thing that you're most likely going to be seeing further in the video, I predict. Uh-oh. So this is like prediction spoilers. Yeah. That's pretty nice. Rad Rad, <laughs> would you please continue on with the video? With the video. Thank around you. Trying to find a way to make ends meet and make enough money to pay my bills. Jeez. I got fed <laughs> up. And I went to oh, lunch and I said, listen, I literally have no idea if sending you this email or this private message is going to have any effect whatsoever. I have no idea if this will benefit me. But the bottom line is this. I lost my job. I, did, buddy. I want to do YouTube for a living. I seem to have the viewership to do it. And the fan base is behind <laughs> me 100%. The oh, fan yeah. base. They're not working. Is there anything that Machinima could maybe do to help me out? Maybe I could get a job with Machinima or I don't know what's going on right now. Hutch referred me to their partnership oh. division. Okay, mm. to which he put me in contact with someone in the partnership program. He reviewed my channel, DSP Gaming, and he said, wow, you got a lot of viewership and you got a lot of stuff. Yeah, let's get you in. And he ended up signing me up for their partnership contract. Now, okay. by the way, back then, in 2011, the partnerships on YouTube were very different than they are today. Mm. They were all actually, at that point, view-based, meaning you would get a certain amount of views on a video, and based on the views, you would make a flat rate amount of money. So I'll throw out, this is completely fabricated, by the way, what I'm about to tell you. No, like most but of this video let's is going to be. Per, so it, wait, so it's a per lie? 10,000 views, you would make $30, <laughs> all right? And so if you could get a video that with 10,000 views, you'd just make a flat rate of 30 bucks. That's how it would work. Now, of course, it would be calculated approximately as a formula that they would use. So at the end of the month, they would tally up your total views. So oh, I, times I think he meant to say was, hypothetical, boom, not fabricated. Now, the reason that these wow. kind of contracts of were video good is gonna be fabricated. was because you were guaranteed to make the same amount of money every month yeah. as long as you could bring in consistent Freudian viewership. Slip. So for me, this worked out perfectly. I wasn't at the whims of YouTube ad revenue where one month YouTube had a bunch of advertisers and the next month they didn't. And you have this constant roller coaster ride of ad revenue on YouTube. For me, it was just keep the viewers happy, keep them coming in and watching videos, and make money, profit, and go. And let me tell you something, folks. Okay. That go. first year <laughs> oh, that I folks. was partnered with Machinima, I made a ridiculous fuck ton of money. Oh. More money than I've ever fuck seen in my oh. life. I'm really? not going to say how much it was because, again, I can't violate my contract or anything like that. What I contract? made a really what big contract? chunk of they've, money. Now, they've, the, the they've, sad they've, thing about it was I had a lot of debt in my attached. name. Credit card, debt, student Fly. loan debt, a ton of debt and stuff in my name from my previous life before YouTube. So what I ended up doing is all that money that I made that first year, that so giant you were fucking money, reborn literally just you got hired by the off off all of the debt that I had had from previous yeah, second uh, years. Coming. The, the, you know, the debt that never it. was going to go away because it was credit card debt and stuff Why like would that. You do this to us? And it would have just kept accumulating oh, and everything. Um, if I yes. 
Nice pause. That's good. So, yeah, <laughs> very good. He's talking about when he first saw Machinima, he already had debt. So we're kind of seeing a, an established pattern with Philippe here of financial mismanagement. If he had this before he... You know, before now, like this isn't the first round of debt, is what he's saying here. Well, he's been in situations before where he's had bunches of debt. Well, you see, how does he do that? Phil is a financier. He is a man of the mathematics when it comes to uh, the monetization of money. You know what I mean, Mister Phil here. The negative, is, right? He is. He is a. Uh, you know, he is an enchantress of the accounting. He has a business degree of which includes accounting and uh, jobs in previous lives of being, uh, what did he say, he was a, a loan shark. Uh, sorry, he said that he was a, a loan <laughs> officer of some sort. And uh, he worked at Wells Fargo and such. This man knows his money, Shad. How, how dare you uh, reference factual evidence that he was bad with his money? How, how could you do this? This man I'm knows. Sorry. You're this, right. This man knows how to manage a business. This man knows how... I mean, think about it, right? Mr. Phil here knows how to stay in business. You think you're ever going to see this guy down on his luck, begging strangers for money and doing all kinds of stuff like that? No. He yeah. is he is a man of principle. He is a man of business. And he will figure out a way to make it work. You won't see this man down on his luck asking Stupid. random strangers for, for, for money. He's a businessman. Right. How could I suggest such a thing? Yes. I... Yes. Boy, are you in for a rude awakening. <laughs> so he made more money than he's ever seen in his life. Wow. Yeah, I also noticed that. Yeah. I'm making huge amounts of money. A fuck um, ton. It's a wonder. It's a wonder that a single man who uh, basically had no obligations other than just a few car notes, house, uh, little condo note shit like that, how does he end up broke just a couple years later? Was he splurging? Or was mm -hmm. he was he investing mm. into the uh, serious adult business, maybe? Hmm. Blame Bernie Madoff, uh, somehow. Mm. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's have some continuance, Mr. Red Red. Hadn't paid it off like that. So that was good. I actually got myself, within that first year to year and a half of being partnered with Machinima, got myself to a good financial position where my credit rating started to go up and up because I didn't have any more bad debt in my name anymore. It was just income, 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 and a mortgage, which is good, and a car loan, which is good. Those things are good. So started going up and up and up, okay? Mortgages um, are good. <clears throat> so the first year up, with Machinima up, up. was good. I actually had a direct point of contact. If anything ever went wrong and I needed to talk to Machinima, I would email this person. I'd be able to get a contact right back pretty quickly. Uh, I remember that first year we had literally almost no issues. I remember not having any copyright. I, I, I take that back because there might have been one, but I don't remember, like in general, a bunch of problems with copyright strikes. I don't remember a bunch of issues with much of anything. Okay. If there ever was a problem, immediately I could almost get a response right away from Machinima because I had that direct point of contact, and it all worked out so well. And in fact, it worked out so well that first year, all right, that I was considered one of Machinima's top partners. And they actually contacted me personally, and they said they wanted to have a sit-down with me. Well, not really a sit-down, but, you know, a, a conference over the phone regarding oh, myself. Oh, a phone call? My channel, the future, <laughs> and all kinds of stuff like that. So I ended up doing that. I, I don't remember he who forgot what everyday things was, are called so now this, 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 with yes, other people. Phone call with. But it basically, wouldn't be a stand-up conversation I had this phone guy. call, and they were like, You mean I have to so, stand up? Or? What do you want to do with your channel in the future? And I explained, I want to split it up. I, I have this series that I do called... Ask the King, and I have this series called The Week in Preview, but eventually I might want to split that because I noticed that those videos don't get as much attention when they're grouped in with all my gameplay stuff. I might want to do a channel where I only do game reviews and stuff like that. But then, then the weirdest thing happened. During this conversation, the guy said, but outside of YouTube, what do you want to do? And I was like, I'm just on the up and up on YouTube. Like, this is the beginnings of something great here in 2011. <laughs> Why would I want to think oh about leaving God. YouTube and doing something else? And it was kind of bizarre the way that this guy, the conversation went, he was trying to almost gearing me towards, you don't want to do YouTube. You only want to do this short term. He's and helping you, want to do you to something fucking else. have a secure And honestly, future. I'll be honest, yeah. that kind of gave me the idea in the back of my head that eventually I would want to do something else outside of YouTube. Oh, yeah? But I just thought it was weird timing that he would ask me. And I even remember, like, he started saying, well, what other things are you into? And I was like, well, fighting games. He's like, oh, fighting games. Did you notice that Street Fighter Four has been starting Those to get live streamed now? Games. You think maybe you want to get into that? Yeah. Maybe you could be a game commentator. And I said, well, I did used to be a pro player. I have a lot of knowledge of the series. And 
I probably could add a lot. And he's like, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's what you should do. You should think Blue to be a, a, a competitive <laughs> games happened. commentator the dude in the literally tried and By the end of the conversation, I was so, up. like, confused. Like, what was the point of this conversation? Yeah, I ask, thought the conversation was going to be about the Blue to my channel and all this stuff. By the end, he was trying to convince is. me to be a games commentator. He'll be sure to tell you. But that's what I mean. This is the kind of stuff that happened with Machinima that would confuse the shit out of me. By the way, that guy who I talked to during this call about the development of my channel never spoke to him again. It was like I talked to him once. That was it. I never heard from him again. Never heard anything further about channel development. Never heard about being a games commentator ever again. <laughs> Gone. Okay? So things went along swimmingly with me during 2011. And, and, er, late in 2011, early 2012, I actually got contacted by Machinima. Now, keep in mind, I had almost no contact with this company. I didn't have How many times is he going to say Machinima? They didn't contact me in regards to, oh, we need you to do this or that. Or, oh, we'd like you to do this for no, an event or this or that. Shit. Nothing like that at all. <laughs> Usually, it was just, uh, I just put out videos, I make money on them, profit, and that's it. And if there's an issue, I contact Two thumbs them up for profit. That, I never really hear from them. All right? I ended up getting contacted by them mm -mm. Uh, saying, guess what? Machinima is doing so great that we have this new program for top partners we're going to give you a bonus structure oh. so if you can hit a certain viewership level every month you're going to make incremental bonus percentages on the money you already make you're going to make more money of course i was thrilled at this i was like yeah this is sound good to me <laughs> um, yeah this program only existed oh, for about money, two to three huh? months oh, buddy. they completely discontinued it and said it was on hold and then next thing you know they later on announced that they were discontinuing the program and they were going to renegotiate everyone's contract, which we'll get to in a moment because that was actually late 2012. And I don't want to get ahead of myself, but that's moment, another thing. I mean, early 2012, minutes. everything's going great, yeah, folks. Yeah. We're making so much money. We're going to put you into this special bonus program. Get really excited. Okay, motivate my viewers. Just the bonus, my Philly. I'm within the bonus structure. I'm supposed to be earning it within bonus. two or three months. They cancel the whole program. And the next thing you know, oh, we're, we're giving you a pay cut. What? What the fuck? That's is how that? Machinima operates. The They're so weird. Reaction? They have initiatives wow. that sound good, and all of a sudden they drop the entire initiative and change their minds about it. Hey, cut. Okay. That's almost as bad really as copyright. I think it's because they're very disorganized. I think they're a company that constantly yeah. Yeah. Copyright says like, the guy that didn't get this fucking video out until because just recently. The of Machinima over the years, yeah, they're a partnership company on YouTube, but they also have their own channels where they have their own shows and things going on on YouTube. They worked on this Halo series for a while and did this Halo Reach series and stuff like that that made no sense. Because a live action TV like, TV like series. Why Machinima. did they even do that? I don't know. Is he talking about Red versus Blue? And then like they, one of the biggest on, series ever at the time. Uh, wasn't it the Mortal wow. Kombat yeah, series? That's just right? some piss fucking Kombat. thing. Why did they do that? I don't Wait, know. It wasn't Red vs. Blue. Versus it's so TV. weird. And by the way, every time they made one of those series, uh, they wanted me they to didn't promote do, the series. They didn't and I do told Halo them, shit to them? Um, sorry, I I'm know. not going to link your series to my main page Red for any extended Rooster period Teeth of time. Because them. I need to promote my own videos to make my own business go. Like, I understand this is your important thing if you want me to mention it to my fans to look or whatever, into that now. but there's no way I'm going to let you dominate my channel for a week because you did this live-action series. That's completely unreasonable. So in a lot of ways, there were disagreements we had over the years, too. You might have noticed also sometimes in my old vlogs and stuff, like, I had that Machinima logo that, that would be spinning and rotated and put into the beginning <laughs> of the video, money. right? That was something they well, really were still. staunchly... You had to do. You had to I have Machinima, Machinima on your related your videos. Back. If you're a Machinima partner, you had to have the Machinima logo branded on everything and overlaid on your videos and stuff like that. And then within like a year of saying uh, all that yeah, stuff, they, they never mentioned it again. In fact, so much so that oh, yeah, later I on, wrong. I think it was it 2015. If you remember, YouTube Whoops. was coming down on people who were getting outside sponsorships and having things like overlays of advertisements and other related companies' logos in their videos. And they were cracking down and saying, we don't want this anymore. If you want advertisements, you have to come through us. I actually wrote Machinima and said, should I stop using your logo in my videos, editing it in? Should I? And they were like, I don't know. We don't care anymore. <laughs> What the fuck? That's See exactly what I mean? What like, it's said. so confusing. This company is so weird that there's one day their main focus is this one program, this one initiative, this one exciting thing, and then they just drop the whole thing and You're completely right. change. The entire company only has one focus I'll give at you one some time. Examples, some, some good examples. Yeah. It's only five guys. All right. There. I was contacted yeah. by Machinima, and, and they here. said, "Are you interested in going to E3? Because we've got this big thing going on so. for this game called Hawkin. It's this first-person uh, mech combat game for PC." Uh, it's coming out in the fall. It's free to play, so it's an interesting model because a lot of games at that point had not gone full free to play yet. Mm. Um, and so they were like, free to play, and if you come to E3, you come to this party, basically you play the game, you do some videos about the game, you advertise it, but we'll get you into E3, and you can cover E3 and do tons of videos of E3, uh, you know, under the branding of Machinima. Um, and it'll be a great event. And I said, why not? And if you remember, I even negotiated with them to get a second pass for John Rambo. And he went out there with me. And I, I had to pay his way. They paid for my plane ticket. 
in my hotel, but they didn't pay for him, so I had to pay his way. Way to include to that, Phil. Oh, wow. He came wow. up, and we, we had a grand wow. old time. Ooh, we went to the Hawking party. We way to playing. include we that in there. The had to make sure. That was the year 2012. Yeah. I went that, to that's that's immaterial so to the happened. fucking I, story. I literally, I'm not even yeah. kidding. I had to talk around here. After E3 ended, Machina was like, we'd like to see how everyone covered E3 and how you covered Hawking and all of that. He was too poor. I had to pay for it. I'm a nice guy. So I gave... My contact at that time, twice. another person, not the original contact, I had a different contact. I gave them my all the video link to the playlist of all the videos. I mean dozens. I think at that point I made like a hundred videos at E3. It was insane the amount of E3 coverage we did. Plus the Hawking videos and everything. I gave him a link to everything. The guy emailed me back, he said, Phil, holy shit. He says, dude, you worked your ass off. He said, I you know, yeah, he I, said you know, this in the probably email. shouldn't yeah. say this, but most of the people who he sent out there, they didn't do shit. They went out there, they went to the Hawking party, and then they just fucking partied their ass off all week. Yeah, they did a few this videos. This is the most casual email there, ever. But literally, they yeah. used it as like a paid vacation. Dude, you worked your butt off. This is great. Like, the guy was verbatim. so positive. This is verbatim like, the email. You by far covered it better than anyone we oh, sent yeah. out there in 2012. You did the best coverage of E3. So thank you very much for <laughs> that. Because you represented it also us in said, a very good so manner. Handsome. You know, yeah. showing that our partners go out there and did so hard great. work. And I was blown away by it. I was like, dude, if you have any other events you want to send me to, <laughs> at this point, you know, I'm making enough money and I can even pay my way if I need to. I'd be more than happy because those videos at, at, at E3 were incredibly profitable and all that. After E3 2012, I was never contacted whatsoever for, to get into <laughs> I E3 wonder why, but you again. worked your ass I was never on. contacted to get into any event ever again besides PAX. That was the one exception is for one or two years... I actually got a miscellaneous email from one of the people at Machinima saying, would you like to get into PAX this year? We can get you into PAX if you want to get in. Um, and incidentally, the years that I got those emails were 2014 and 2015. The two years when I definitely couldn't go because that first year we had just moved in here and we didn't even have the house fully set up by the time that PAX West was going on. So we definitely couldn't go. Can and then the year after, Leanna ended up getting sick. We actually had it arranged that I had passes and everything. Pause the risk. And she ended up getting sick and we couldn't go. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, I don't... Fucking Leanna. Leanna got sick, stupid bitch got sick and then we couldn't go. Oh man. I thought this was 2015 where he said it was financially irresponsible for him to be able to go. I thought he was too broke. He blamed oh, Leanna. It was Leanna's fault. We're in 2015 already? He's well. He just referenced 2015, but this, I, if I remember correctly, I remember he's like, "Oh, I can't go because it'd be too expensive for me to go." Oh. He's like, "It's not financially feasible." Okay, so let's let's rewind a little bit. Okay, so apparently he gets this fucking glowing email from this guy who's like, "Man, like you're so much like better that. than everyone else. You really worked your fucking ass off, and boy, did you crank out that quality content. All these other partners are shit compared to you. Yeah, uh, you're so handsome. Your cock is so huge. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you're so great. Yeah, come on to my, come on over to my office, and I'll give you a hand ski under the desk. Huh? What do you say? And make it right. Then nothing came of it, apparently. Like, oh, you did so much better than everyone else. We would love to say, and Phil goes, oh, you know, my idea would be I'd love to go all over the place. And apparently the guy says, nah, that's fine. No, no you did such a good job, but uh, we're not interested to send you anywhere else. What kind of shit is that? How does he just come up with these stories? Why? Why he's? I feel like he's making these up on the fly. I really do. I feel like he has to be. I, yeah. Like, and nothing comes up about that. Like, that. Like that's it. Like that. That. That's that. Before. Yeah. Like that's not. That's not normal. That's not something that happens. Like, who? Who are you trying to fool here, Phil? <laughs> Somebody. Hold on, real quick. Somebody in the comments said. Uh, hold on, where is it? Oh my god, it was awesome. Somebody said that, oh, Hate Live sounds like a racist podcast, like with the KKK. <laughs> it was the oh. the realest Falcon. It says a podcast named Hate Live sounds like some KKK or podcast. <laughs> oh. Hate Live, yeah. That's a, that's a fantastic comment. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I was finished. I had to give it recognition. <laughs> this is a fully hate, interactive hate stream, okay? Eight Live kind of sounds like a really shitty anime about a bunch of girls. Or oh, something. and they're trying to sing to. They're singing in order to destroy the school. Yeah, like they they're they're singing, 
brings about destruction. Yeah. They're wearing SS uniforms. Lois wouldn't like it. That's a thing for some reason. Lois, no, Lois would, would hate it. it at all. He said LOL TBH. He's in the chat. There's a lot of people here. Oh. Holy shit. <laughs> there's more people here. Uh, there's like 850 people here as compared to like, oh, I don't know, a day one stream for Phil. So, hi. Right. Make sure to donate tons of bits, all right? Because we, uh, we really need it. Mr. Rad Red, play. <laughs> so, two years in a row, I had the opportunity and I couldn't go. By the way, 2016, got nothing, no offer from Machinima whatsoever to go to PAX. Of course not. And you see what I mean? Like, it's so weird. And the bottom line is with Machinima, Ooh. the other thing. Their staff is constantly Would you even in and out want the door. To go, though? The people who I met at E3 2012, within three months, were laid off from, from Machinima and weren't working for the company anymore. I'm not exaggerating. That's true. The contacts that I had for that event were gone, completely gone from the company. Now, incidentally, some of them ended up coming back later in other different roles. And I would recognize two years later, someone's in this other role. Holy shit, I met you at E3 2012. What's going on? You know, And we'd have a conversation via Skype or via email or whatever. But it was so weird that this company literally is a rotating door of staff where people don't stay there long term. It seems like most people who work there end up within two, you know, if not a few months, two, three years, you're out the door. And that was the problem with me with Machinima all the entire time that I had this relationship with them is I never had a consistent point of contact to go to for more than just a few months. It was always, oh, well, that person who you used to talk with isn't here anymore. Oh, well, that, that initiative that we had is completely gone now. You have to go do this way. Yeah. Okay. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a quick moment. pause <clears throat> real quick. I just want to address this. But, okay. So here's Phil, right? He sees these, these fucking red flags, right? Oh man, I keep. The people just keep fucking abandoning the sinking ship and shit. Oh, man, they're fucking telling me that I'm doing good, and then they fucking don't offer me any opportunities or anything, even though I've demonstrated my value, according to his story, of course. Um, he sees all these red flags. He doesn't think to himself, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a really... Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big asset to any team, and so I should look elsewhere. No, no. He decided... To continue on with these people because they were offering him the most money. Okay? So I just want you to keep this in mind. When Phil talks about all these negative things, all these things, oh, they did this and oh, they did that. I want you to keep in mind the reason why he decided time after time to stay with them was because they were offering him the most money. And so he made the calculation that even though I see all these things that are going on right now, they'll give me the most money, and so I will settle to stay there for profit. Yeah. All right? there, there was even a point in time where he was considering leaving Machinima, and he started going window shopping for other places, and he said that he would not take any offers unless they promised um, a partnered status exactly. or something. Exactly. So I just want you to keep that in the back of your mind. Keep that fresh. That this man is going to tell you all of the things that he ignored or excused in order to try to make the most money possible in the short term. So. Also, this is still 2012. Was it Machinima going through some serious downsizing at this point? Like there's... With, at that point, there's no way Phil would have the exact same contact. He should know this, but, you know, God forbid you actually look into the person that is sponsoring you. I mean, you know, he doesn't care. Go ahead, Chad. I was going to say, any company has that in place. Uh, where I work, it's a hospital. My God, your line manager seems to change from day to day. That's just how companies work. People mm. rotate through jobs. Um, but if they weren't all bending down and <laughs> you know worshiping Phil on their knees, then then they were doing it wrong, apparently. Fucking right. But uh, I don't know. That's just for me. When I hear this, he's gonna talk about all these red flags and all this shit. Again, Phil saw the most amount of money to stick with them, despite anything that they did that he found to be immoral or unethical, or unprofessional, or bad for their own business. He didn't give a goddamn about that. And he continued to stay with them until the bitter end, which apparently he says at the end is going to be this big fucking payoff. It's going to be hilarious. All of these things, he literally disregarded in order to try to make the most cash up front that he could. 
All right, let's continue. I remember it was late 2012, all right? Now, again, everything's going good, swimmingly, smoothly, nothing going wrong at all. Late 2012, it was around, I believe, November, mid-November, late 2012. I got a call, not an email, not a text, a call from Machinima, something very important we need to talk. Uh-oh. Okay? Called them up. Uh, sorry, Phil, you know, well, I know we already canceled that bonus initiative from earlier this year that we mentioned. Uh, now we have to renegotiate your contract for less money. And I was like, what the hell? What gives? Why are you going to renegotiate? You renegotiate my contract for less money. My views are sky high. I must be bringing you in tons of money, right? They said, no. In fact, we had an audit of, uh, of everything going <laughs> sky on. Sky high. And we actually found out that we're Hands paying you more hips. money than your channel makes. And it has nothing to do specifically with my uh -huh. channel. It's, I guess it's all channels on YouTube. The initial contracts that Machinima <laughs> had given everyone... The money that they had negotiated for everyone was ended up being more money than what ad revenue brought in on YouTube. Now, it could have been that YouTube ad revenue plummeted that year, and there's strong rumors that in 2012, that was the first year where kind of the high advertisement revenue bubble burst, and ever since then, it's been a steep decline. I don't know, because I wasn't tracking ad revenue back then. I was only tracking my channel views. I didn't give a crap about ad revenue. But that was the first time ever that Machinima, out of the blue, said, you're getting a pay cut. And you have a choice. You could stay with us and take this pay cut, or you could seek to go elsewhere. Now, at that point, I liked Machinima. Cinema. They had sent me to E3, they had done nice things for me, and I said, why wouldn't I stay with you guys? So I took the pay cut, that was actually the time, if you remember, I had three channels. I had DSP Gaming, DSP Street Fighter, and I also had a vlogging channel, TSP Vlogging. Well, they told me that DSP Street Fighter was making, like, almost, like, really bad ad revenue. It was bring, <laughs> not bringing in much ad revenue at all, and they were going to have to give me a giant pay cut over oh. there if I were to keep uploading videos to my fighting game channel. And so I that's said, why that channel died. If I'm going to keep DSP Gaming yep. open, and you're offering me a contract that on DSP Gaming that's lines way up. more money than if this new contract for DSP Street Fighter, what incentive do I have to upload any videos to DSP Street Fighter? You're making no sense. Why would I even keep that channel oh, when God. I can just upload all my fighting game footage to DSP and Gaming? Just spam and the fucking DSP Gaming channel the hell. Like, yeah, I guess we see your point. So, yeah, it was really weird, the whole situation in late 2012. Oh, how weird. Everyone's yeah, contracts, real weird. Okay? The thing that gets me is this. You would think that Machinima has accounting, right? They have an accounting or finance department who looks at ad revenue versus what they're paying their partners. Okay. And they would be able to have a red flag and come to the management of the company and say, <laughs> hey, Mr. CEO, hey, Mr. President of Machinima, hey, whoever, uh, we fucked up. Look, we're paying hey, way more money. Can we fix this right away? Yeah, Why did they wait on. an entire year of having these sky-high contracts before they realized that this was an issue? I mean, what Why about would you, they even Phil? have made those contracts initially? Didn't they have anyone do some kind of market analysis or anything on YouTube with advertisements to figure out that they were paying way more money than what they were making? It doesn't make any logical sense, all right? And actually, at that time, Machinima apparently was in dire financial straits, and that's when they ended up getting extra funding from YouTube. You, have, you, you might hear over the years, Machinima constantly has to get funding from someone else because they bleed money. As a company, they constantly bleed money. They don't make a lot of money. What they do is they just take more investors' money. So at that point, I believe they took investor money from, like, Microsoft. And that's why they did that big Halo series. Um, and they, they took investor money from YouTube, right? So then I remember the years of 2013 and 2014 were interesting. Because those years, I was live streaming now. I was doing direct capture. I was doing a lot more of that stuff. Okay. Um, still, I remember those years, there wasn't too much issue where I had to constantly contact Machinima or anything like that, that I can remember, okay? Mm. Um, every once in a while, maybe there'd be a false copyright strike or something that I needed to talk to them with, but for the most part, they would take false. care of stuff. That's why well, I always, they're all I always, false. I always false. felt that like Machinima had every my back when, when, when worse came to worse, if something hit the fan... Machinima would usually talk to YouTube for me on my behalf, get the information, and relay it to me in a very matter-of-fact manner. And okay. I appreciated that because I didn't have Call a direct line of contact to YouTube. I, YouTube literally had no way to contact them for issues at all. All they had was a forum and a fucking stupid, you know, frequently asked questions area. They had no way for a content creator to contact them and say, I have an issue, I need help, and get an answer, which is terrible. You have an entire website based off of making money because other people are putting their content on your site and if there's an issue you they can't get help what a fucked up system youtube is right but machinima was always that go-to guys that had my back the problem was again i didn't always have the same way like sometimes i would have a direct point of contact sometimes i wouldn't sometimes i would be emailing or calling them other times i would have to skype them other times they would have this system and this skype is where them? i really truly believe this is where machinima began to fall apart oh boy I believe it was 2013. 
when they started full-time implementing this logs system. All right. Okay. What it is, it's an automated system. If you want something from Machinima, you have to go to this web page on their website and you have to fill out a form giving all your information of what you need and you got to put it into their log system. Most log. of the time when I had an issue, I wouldn't get a response for Logs. one to two days. Now, that's okay if it's a routine request or an issue, but what if there's a copyright strike against my channel and I copyright. need to get this looked into right away so that everyone can get it cleared up? You know what I mean? Um, it sucked. Everyone. It wasn't no, just a you, response Phil. time from just this log you. system. And anyone who's still with Machine agrees this log system sucks. And it actually sucks because a lot of other partnership networks all also use the same log system. Oh, so, so it's they not went from unique. a personal touch where you had a direct line of contact, you would get responses all the time to a system where it was very slow to react. There were some people who would blow me off. I'd ask for something. They wouldn't respond. Or if they responded, it would be like something completely unrelated or not answering my question. And then they would close the log to which I would respond. How can you close a log when you didn't actually answer my question? You can't. The way to close a work log is to prove that you've completed this the work. This is the burial video. The question is I don't know answer. why everybody Therefore, didn't think so. Therefore, you can't close this fucking this log. This is the super oh. fair. There were a lot of people who I had the super fair in video, right? System, he didn't say anything positive about that. Who I had issue with because apparently they were trained and instructed to just as soon as you respond to someone, regardless if you give them the answer, close the fucking log. <laughs> so now I got to do a whole new log every time I want to ask you about the same the issue log. that you didn't the answer. Log. Yeah, bullshit. Terrible system, absolutely terrible. And there was Damn, no nobody ever there makes out when they get if someone didn't do their work, work no one ever got in no. trouble, or at least from our end, you can never see that. So that's one of the things I really hated. Pause real quick. Let's um, let's do just a quick thing. Okay, I just want to say I, I just mentioned this in just like I said. I don't know. Uh, let us know in the chat the audio balance how we've been riding so far. I think it's good. My understanding of our audio balance and the goal I had is that Phil is louder than us, and so we're not really able to talk over him and so it relies on our pausing but uh if that's not how it's going let me know i'll try to fix it uh, ju uh just wait till all the pissed off people on youtube yeah um but okay <laughs> so here's the thing all right just just to just to say how i think things are going here okay people were saying oh man you know it's not going to be that bad you know what has he said positive so far? Anything he said positive about, oh, they sent me to E3, he completely just invalidated it by being like, well, you know, yeah. they sent me to E3, but those fucking faggots, they didn't fucking send me a second time, and so fuck them. Because, you know, they told me I did so good, and then they didn't follow up on it, so they're stupid at the end of the day. They didn't realize my potential. Like, for people, just, I, I really think, for people that are like, oh, man, this is going to be okie doke, like, he's going to be super fair, and fill in his mind, he says he's fair. I don't see how moving forward he's going to say anything positive about them. Just like, this is like, I don't know, how far are we in the video? Is this like the halftime report? This is 30 oh minutes head. into the video. Okay, so this, this is, is like the halftime. Half. Yeah, this is like the halftime report, okay? Let's sort of recap where we've been and, and sort of like, you know, uh, regroup here. Okay, so, so far in his story, he, he, he stumbled into Machinima because he was being a dick towards a guy named Hutch. And Hutch somehow graciously hooked him up with the partnership over at Machinima. While he was with Machinima, he was making ungodly about somebody because I'm a pioneer of YouTube. And then at some point they decided, hey, let's send you and a lot of other people. So not just uniquely you, Phil. Let's send a bunch of people uh, over to E3. And he busted his ass fucking putting out those videos. Whereas all the other fucking traditional YouTubers who are fucking fake and scripted, scripted comedy... They were just partying it up. And so him and John Rambo, who, by the way, Mr. Big Baller Phil over here and fucking peasant fucking Rambo. Rambo couldn't even afford a fucking <laughs> ticket. And so... He managed to mention that twice. Yeah. He said it twice. I paid for him. So in, in addition to throwing... In, order, in addition to flipping a nickel to his feet, he also gave him a ticket and let him go into uh, the cargo area in his carry-on bag. So that Rambo was able to come with him. Uh, he crumpled, he crumpled the hundreds up and threw them on the floor in front of him. Yeah. yeah. So that's where we're at so far. And at this point, he's talking about, oh, I got to fucking react. I got to renegotiate and shit. And now I'm fucked. Okay. It's only going to get worse from here, no? Am I, am I crazy? Yeah. He's going to talk about the copyright strike. Oh, they fucking. They, I, all right. Predictions. All right. They handled the copyright strike okay for me, but they gave me terrible fucking advice and ruined my channel forever. Well, you know, they fucking, they, uh, they tried to talk to YouTube and get this figured out, but they didn't come up with fucking anything, and then they fucking dropped me. Fuck them. How, how is this going to be any better? This, that's, that, that I feel like all the positives are done. This he's is where we... Go ahead, Sean first, and then Tyler. Because he's already 
complained, oh, I had to lodge a log. Sometimes it could take a whole day for them to get back to. That's just how businesses work, man. You're not the only person they had. Sometimes you gotta just, you know, roll with it. Yeah. Is that the cat? What? Can you is hear the, that? I, no, it's oh. not a big deal. I just fucking, it, it infuriates me to hear a cat. Oh, happy. is that the kitty? I'm sorry. No, yes. you yeah, can do whatever yeah. you want. Hey, you can do it, but, you know. Mr. Tyler, oh, go mute. ahead. What you I got? Mute. No, no, no. I'm just saying I hate the fucking joy of a cat. That's all. Go ahead, Mr. So Tyler. What you got for us? Uh, all right. Go on, kitty. Um, Fuck you. So, yeah, we're past the point of the recap. All the positives are done so now the negatives begin this is where he, <laughs> this is where he really starts slanging dick oh uh, motherfucker you're not gonna de- you're not gonna make that your own all right i want i I'm want everybody to understand privacy. i uh, want everybody to understand slang and i'm gonna tweet this out slang and dick trademark fred fox industries all right slang and dick is a fucking registered trademark i will copyright strike you for that you fuck all right i'm gonna go behind the privacy curtain while you go do that oh okay well anyway so that i feel like that would be a, a good faith recap is that you know, this. I, I think that's all the good he's got. Uh, what do you think, Red Red? The one thing that frustrates me about this video is that he continues to speak in absolutes where they always did this thing, and within a short period of time, he speaks when they always didn't do this thing. Machinima always had my back, except when they didn't. It's like, why should we believe anything you say when you're giving us these blanket statements, Hmm. these 100% truths that they were always behind you, and then explain to us when they weren't behind you? So there is no always here, Phil. And as we start going into the second half, I predict we're going to see a lot more of those not always, especially the events that caused him and Machinima to part ways. <laughs> I just, uh, I just, all right. So first of all, I already claimed my territory on slang and dick with the trademark. Thank you very much. But, uh, oh my God, I just, I'm just trying to figure out how this is going to get any better for Mr. Philap. I, I don't feel like there's anything good to come of this. I think this is just all going to get more negative. I think he's going to get married soon. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And Machinima fucked him over with that too, right? You can, yeah, you can invite them to a wedding. Yeah. Before I forget, okay. he briefly mentioned his channel DSP Street Fighter where he put most of his fighting game footage and he labeled that channel wrong nearly immediately. Do you know the last videos he put up on his DSP street fighter channel? Hmm. Tech and tag tournament Two fan appreciation matches hmm. on a channel labeled DSP street fighter. I remember he played uh, tech and revolution I was very interested by that because I didn't play the game myself, but yeah. um, I, I really didn't give a fuck about that channel back in the day. I just, you know, and, and this guy, a, a genuine businessman, he knows. Now, am I incorrect if I were to say, from my memory, the reason why he had the DSP Street Fighter channel is because he was putting up so many parts and it was starting to fuck with people on his regular gaming channel. And so he separated it so that people wouldn't get spammed if they weren't interested yeah. in fighting games. Yeah, that's about right. And if you are specifically subscribed to DSP Street Fighter exclusively, and he had that sudden drought in 2012 he just mentioned, he didn't give the people who subscribe to that channel so much as a goodbye, so much as a (laughs) please move to this channel in order to continue to watch my fighting game coverage. Nothing. DSP Street Fighter was taken out back and... Phil himself pulled the trigger. And the people who followed that channel specifically can go suck one. You mean nothing to me now. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, anyway, so that is the halftime report. Uh, we're going to have a quick singing, a uh, quick uh, performance 
of uh, of a song by Rad Rad here. He's gonna sing uh, the Persona Five battle theme for us, and uh, after that, we'll uh, we'll get back into the indoor. <laughs> you not doing that. <laughs> you never see it coming. I don't know the rest. All right, play, I don't know no. the lyrics. Play the damn yeah. video. The next major issue that happened with Machinima with me happened in late 2013, okay? And this is another one that I completely don't understand how the fuck these partnership networks didn't see this coming. <laughs> they didn't see it YouTube coming. decided to flip a switch on a change that screwed over everyone on YouTube who made gameplay videos. Why is there a thumbs what up for that? What this change did is it made it so that even if you were with a partnership yeah, network, me over. their thumbs content up. ID match system now affected you. So overnight, I was fine. I never had a content ID match, never had major issues with copyright, nothing. Overnight, one night in December 2013, I'm not even kidding you, hundreds if not thousands of my videos on DSP Gaming got matched for music, Command. visual content, whatever. Some of them were blocked, some of them were muted, some of them were removed, some oh. of them just had ad Sounds like stolen. your Twitter feed. And it's ridiculous because all I was always protected from that being with a partnership network, okay? How the fuck did Machinima not know that YouTube was making this change, how did they not relay this to their partners, and how did they have no protection in place to stop this problem? At the time, it wasn't just me. It was every big partner on YouTube. Uh, Maximilian. I actually talked to Maximilian about it. I talked to... Oh, um, name drop some oh, people. Oh, God. What the hell is his name? What the, the Rad Brad. Oh! Ah! We were all kind of communicating via Twitter trying to figure out ways to solve Wait, this what? issue what until you uh, until Rad Rad. Rad Brad. figured out a bigger fix. They oh, literally said, talk to Rad Rad. It works, guys. But for now, we can't help you yet. You're going to have to figure it out for yourself. So I actually figured out a way to remove the music from the videos who had claimed music. And I relayed that to other big YouTubers. Who oh, yeah. Machinima. And it was this big rigmarole for like two weeks. Then rigmarole. finally, after this two-week rigmarole, Machinima says, well... For certain Wham. partners who are big enough, we're going to give you the managed partnership. All right? And I remember I was one of the people chosen. Rad Brad was. At that time, I don't Rad think Rad. Maximilian was. I could be wrong about oh. that, but I'm almost positive he said <laughs> Why he you... wasn't selected for the Why managed partnership. Why are you partnership. saying He was this? worried because all his videos were getting claimed. And he's like, how the fuck does this work? This is bullshit. He's going to finish off that drink pretty soon. I think but Max had at that a point, bigger Machinima, fish again, to fry. Two weeks, but... They dragged their feet. They somehow didn't yeah, see this problem nothing. coming. But when it happened, Machinima came to the rescue well, again and coming. put me in a managed partnership. They didn't see it coming. And from then on, you know, the late late 2013, all the way until I severed my partnership with Machinima just recently, I was under a Severed. managed partnership where I was protected from content ID and all that shit. I never had that issue because I was considered under a managed partnership. So again, Machinima did me a solid and kind of helped me out. Even though, and yeah, there were negatives. I hated the log system. I hated that I didn't have a direct point of contact all the time. But the fact that I, they would come to my rescue on issues like that was much appreciated. All right. <clears throat> now, in 2015, so this was uh, two years ago. You know, I had been out here, living here in, in uh, Washington State for about a year. Phil can do bad. I started having tons of issues. Uh -oh. I started getting DDoS attacks. Uh -oh. I, started, I got swatted uh -oh. that year. I had the oh, false boy. copyright strikes here we against go. my account and all that shit. All this false. nasty shit happened. Call them negative okay. things. Call them Machinima, negative. Machinima, in a huge way, helped me that year. Uh, all right? yeah. They actually got in contact with me in regards to all the shit that was going on. Mm -hmm. And they said, we're going to personally help you. I got in contact with the head of the partnership program, which, guess what? He was the same guy who I had met in person at E3 2012 three years earlier. He had left the company for a long time, three years, came back, and he was hired as the head of the partnership company, or partnership Partnership program. company. So obviously it was a huge coincidence, but it was also <laughs> great because I knew the guy, and we had a great rapport. I could explain to him the problems that were going on with false copyright, oh. the issues and shit. You guys both spoke English. He would I go see. to YouTube and talk to them on a conference call, immediately call me right back oh, and yeah. say, here's what we learned. There was another girl who was working for the company who was actually in contact with me in regards to, like I said, attending PAX. She wanted to She also talk. was the person who was getting me in contact with game publishers really badly. to get me free copies of games. If you actually remember in 2015, I got free copies of a ton of games, including um, games like Rainbow Six Siege, um, oh, I had Siege. a early copy of Fallout 4. I got a copy of the Uncharted Collection. Because you fucking of, begged and pleaded for that one. I'm trying to remember, there was like maybe was 10 one. games over it the course of 2015 that Machinima actually hooked me up and put me in contact with those game companies face. and got me uh, and got you me had free a, copies you had of those a wedding games. to get quick, out of. Quick pause. And that was the first time Machinima had ever yes. done All right. So, you guys remember what this was. So he's going to try to spin this like it's okay. Uh, you guys remember quite vividly what happened. They gave him a bunch of little games, little trinkets here and there. And then what? Then they hit him with the whippersnap. Renegotiate that contract. Take you from yep. views-based to ads-based. And then what? He hasn't gotten a free motherfuck since, has he? 
They nope. dub, they they fucking flipped him and dipped him. Buttering him up. They did him dirty. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, I think that's interesting. You know, Phil conveniently left out. I, I don't know if you guys if you guys are are missing this part. There's it seems like he's leaving some part out. You remember that part where Machinima was taking down all the this is how you don't plays and fucking over our channels with content ID and copyright strikes and. Man, oh I, yeah, I'm, I'm forgetting that part. I, th- I thought that was a pretty big solid yeah. that they did. You remember he was in the chat and he said, "Oh yeah, guys, this how you don't plays won't be along, won't be around they, for good. They're this gonna this be gone for good. Finished. Yeah, they're finished." They're... But you see, that didn't affect Phil negatively. No, but that's so a solid. Uh, but they did him a solid. They. Yeah, this is them really helping him out that they went and harassed people that were making videos for no profit, just for the fun of it, uh, that did not t- take away from his views, you know. Oh, uh, you know, and they were covered under the same gray area of fair use that he uses for his video game playthroughs. Uh, well, you know, uh, they did me a solid, you know. No, he didn't mention that at all. Come on, what's up with this? Uh, you got to talk yeah. about it, no? They really pounded the fuck out of people that were making the say you don't plays. They did. And uh, Phil wanted to return the favor, I guess, later on. But that's spoilers. Um, yeah. Anything else worth mentioning while Phil looks completely yeah. shocked and appalled by all this? I have one word. Sideburns. Oh, yeah. They're pretty uneven, Sort huh? that out. Wow. Jesus. Yeah. That's like a solid inch. I, mm, anyway. Yeah, he's looking like, like he, a fat I, Elvis sorry. impersonator. What? <laughs> Why are they so different? Anyway, that's not it. You know, there, but once you see them, you can't unsee. You can't unsee. Yeah. Yep. Anything else worth uh, mentioning before we uh, move on to Phil apparently giving uh, Machinima the props? Eh? Not anything like that for me. So from my perspective, even though 2015 was a shitty year in regards to false copyright false. strikes and getting swatted and all that shit. I thought it was a good year because I now had a new rapport with Machinima, right? I had, I was friend, basically not really friends, but I was a good rapport with the head of the partnership co- uh, co- uh, division. Okay. I had another contact who was getting me games and stuff and getting me, you know, get me uh, in cahoots with events and stuff. Cahoots. And things were looking up and up. Well, you know, it was busy late 2015 and then 2016 came around and I was busy with my work or whatever. And about, I'd say probably the first quarter to maybe a little bit earlier into mid-2016, I was like, man, I haven't heard from Machinima in a long time. I wonder what's going on. Actually, I take this back because I screwed up. Let me backtrack a bit because I'll talk about this in a moment. Okay. In late 2015, Machinima contacted me and said, Phil, the party's over. No. Oh. And I said, uh-oh, what now? Now, the here's the party's thing. Unlike over. YouTube two party's years, over. Years prior, remember, late 2012, they had renegotiated my contract once for way less money. He okay. got good guts. And I accepted it at that time because that contract was great and I liked being with Machinima. They'd sent me to E3 and all of that. Well, in late 2015, I didn't get a phone call. I didn't get uh, any kind of Skype call, nothing. I got a generic email from someone in the finance department of Machinima (laughs) stating, Phil, we are canceling your current contract as of this date. Here's the new contract. You're no longer going to be in a contract that's based off of views. You're now going to be on the contract that almost everyone on YouTube is based off of, ad revenue. Okay, oh, so what I earned was based off the ad revenue that my DSP Gaming and other channels were earning on YouTube. They were kicking me out of the old programs and putting me into this ad revenue based one. And I said, well, this is sucks because number one, it's completely this impersonal. No one called me. No one explained the situation. They sent me this generic form letter actually with a new contract in it. All right. Stating that they were forcing me into this new contract or they were going to cancel my contract at the end of the year. And I said, this is ridiculous. This isn't how you treat someone who's been a partner and a top partner of yours for oh, years. Oh, why won't you let me I should have gotten a call to make more money the than I'm making you. And by the way, they were rushing exactly. me into it. They were only giving me like 30 days to, to sign this new, way less lucrative contract or else they were going to give me the boo. Okay? That's boo. So immediately I contacted the head of the partnership program who I was friendly with and I said, listen... I need more time than just this. I need to go out and see what else is out there, what other companies are offering, and see ah. if your offering or what you're giving me now is better than what they're yeah. going to offer. You can't yeah. just force me to sign this within a couple of weeks. I'm going to need some time. 
So the good thing is, again, sure they I can. had good rapport with the head of the partnership program. He said, we are going to give you an exception. We're going to give you like two, two months to figure out what you want to do. And you can sign with us or not. It's up to you. But this is the best offer, the absolute best All offer of this we can from offer. A we apologize. We know it's a pay cut. Doesn't work but it is Machinima. what it is. We can't keep paying you a flat rate because, again, apparently Machinima had found out they were paying me more money than what the channel was making ad revenue-wise. And that's so why on earth, again, their finance department didn't figure this out and stop it to begin with. I have no they idea. Did. They did. They you just described them doing that. Your partnership company That's exactly why they're forcing you out. People who never alert <laughs> anyone in the company of what's going on. We'll and pause in a second. pay people more uh, than what they make. It makes no fucking logical sense. How could you stay in operation? You couldn't. You'd be bleeding money constantly. Okay, pause. No That's sense. a good pause. Okay, so I feel amazed that uh, that these people just didn't recognize the problem immediately. Because, you know, Machinima only has uh, a few partners, just Phil and uh, the Rad Brad, and that's it, you know. Uh, Machinima doesn't have a bunch of partners that all have needs and stuff like that. I mean, you know, Phil is, uh, Phil is exceptional. And so uh, Phil here does not understand how a company could not come to their senses and uh because they didn't figure it out within this short predetermined window that he's come up with then they just shouldn't have come up with it at all like it's just, they let me fucking slip under the cracks for so long they should have just continued to uh so anyways phil just acknowledges that he was basically a burden to this fucking company like really think about this right the only thing that phil really offers to this company at this point in his fucking new I would say, what, from 2013 on or whatever, with his new fucking uh, shitty fucking approach and reputation and all this stuff, the only thing he really offered to them was just the sheer amount of views uh, and, as a result, ad impressions. And uh, at that point, he wasn't even carrying his weight there. He was a, He was a burden to the company, and they still kept him. And then they give him yep. this exception. I don't know. It seems fine to me. I don't understand why he's so upset with these people. He seems indignant that that they are then saying, "Well, you're we're going to need to renegotiate, so it's worth something to us. So we're not, you know, in the red because we've got you on board." He's all indignant that no, you should keep paying me more that I'm bringing in. Well, right. Um, it's not I, how you, any of this works. I deserve it. You know you. You didn't figure that yeah. mortgage that mortgage problem out right away. You should just let them keep bleeding your money then. That's right. That's right. He didn't figure out the whole fucking copyright thing right away. And so he should just continue to let people give him copyright strikes. It doesn't make any sense. It's sort of just this fucking... They didn't get me quick enough, so they shouldn't have got me at all. Uh, shame on them uh, mentality. And again, what he's describing here is him getting ahead... Them finding out about it and them correcting for it and him being like, well, that's fucking bullshit. What the fuck? Ridiculous. Anything else to point out before we move on? This is a company that Phil claims is bleeding money and now he's going to get less money? What? 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 Hit me with that triangle. So, I went out there in late 2015... And I looked at other partnership companies and what they were offering, and it turns out they were offering slightly less what Machinima wanted to offer me to stay with them. So I said, okay, I'm going to stay with Machinima. Now, I remember at that time I talked about this publicly. A lot of people gave me shit. They said, Phil, didn't you hear the negative press that Machinima did this thing and Machinima did that thing? Why would you stay with Machinima in late 2015 when they have this negative stigma associated with them and a lot of big YouTubers have left them because of this? Why would you stay with them? And I simply put said because... They're offering me more money than anything. Exactly. Else. That's the bottom line. That's why I'm staying with them. Because it's, it's a pain in the like, ass. It's not, I mean, yeah, another reason I would say probably contract. was because I was friendly with the head mm -hmm. of the partnership program. Yes, I had that rapport with him, and I knew if I needed help with something, that I could contact him and I could get help with it. Um, but outside of that, yeah, it wasn't, they weren't flying me to E3 anymore. Um, and and uh, at least at that point in late 2015, they were giving me free copies of games. So that was a nice thing, okay? Yeah. Um, then that's so tough. anyway. I ended up accepting... Can I pause real quick? Can Absolutely quick? not. <sighs> but I'm going to anyway. Because I would like to mention that Phil uses this claim, this negative, that they refuse to fly me to those these big events. Phil, I have two questions for you in that regard. Would you even want to go to those events again? <laughs> and 
more importantly, wouldn't that interfere with your gaming schedule that you hold so dear? You wouldn't be willing to give up a high-profile release just to kind of help out the company you claim to not only not work for, but wow. is bleeding money? Wouldn't you want to give them a little bit of a little extra coverage? Wow. To that, I'd say I'd say the last high-profile release that went viral for Phil was him masturbating. But I will say this: um, there is a distinct thing that she left out there. It's not that he would be foregoing uh, some new releases; it'd be foregoing hashtag layer on time. Rad, rad. Uh... You can't have layer on time at a convention. You got to be on your feet, walking around, and talking with people. And doing stuff. You can't you can't fucking lay around there. What is he gonna do? Fucking have like you ever see like those things where they're like they carry it's like a bed with four with four uh, fucking handholds for people to carry you around and shit? What's he gonna do? Like is an he gonna Egyptian do that? Pharaoh. Yeah. Is he gonna do that? Is that how he's gonna rock it, you know? He's gonna come out like Charlotte and shit from the WWE? Like this guy <laughs> needs the layer on time. This guy does not have the fucking capacity to walk around and to fucking deal with people and shit like that. And we heard fucking uh, the Aryan Lord say that he's a very withdrawn, weird person. And so what's he going to walk around with Leanna and stuff? He needs John Rambo there as his wingman to give him credibility and to hype him up and to take on the world. That was his life partner. Now that he has none of that. Yeah. How awkward a meet and greet with Phil would be. You had to see like a line of people. He would just Hi, be wanting to get it over with as soon as possible. That would be the feeling. Like, yeah. He just wants to get it Shuffling, done with. Looking at his shoes, hoping, looking at, you know, what time is it? Oh, yeah. You think I'm great? All right. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, is there anything I can do for you or, you know, what? Uh... Hey, uh, here's here's a business now. card. Hey, uh, here's a business card. Let me, uh, let me sign the back for you. But make sure to check that out there. There's a link to my Patreon. And by the way, I've been holding this in for a while. Okay, can we just address the fucking, the, 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 uh, gee, I don't even know what to call it. The format, the layout, the layout the here of this video. Look at the, the layout of this video. Is this not gross? I mean, he it's looks, ugly. he looks at this, like, imagine if he survives this and he ends up okay and stuff like that. You can imagine looking back on this and just feeling ashamed of yourself. Look at that. There's just a simple white text with black outline to say http i don't know why he included http too what the fuck is wrong with you uh what? you know put the Nothing s https https come on man what the fuck but god that is so gross this is a video where he's outlining his experience with machinima and he's got teespring.com slash stores slash dsp gaming and patreon.com slash dark side fill. You can't just have the embedded buttons like a, or like a graphic for the Teespring. You have to just have above his head at all times floating around there. I mean... The URL? I, gross. It's, there's there's yeah, two it's things good. that I want to point out to Fred in that regard. Not only are those links in the video plain to see in plain sight, I guarantee you that those same links are in the description of the YouTube oh, video. Yeah. Of course. His, his descriptions are so blown out. They are, well, all right, I was going to make a reference. They, these things are incredibly <laughs> fucking blown out. It is, it is unreasonable to click show more because once you do, you're going to get hit with a tidal wave of feces. This guy <laughs> is so greasy look at this interface just take a second i'm not kidding i know we've been looking at it for a while all right i have too look at this interface and just 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 take it in for a second the patreon <laughs> one is overlaid with the youtube <sighs> i uh... that is so gross it is gross he couldn't just have a button in the middle that just says Teespring logo and just DSP Gaming or something like that. Yeah. He has to fucking spell out the entire link. Like like somebody's going to try to click. And I bet you one of his fans would be like, I'll click on that. Yep. 
and they'll double click can the I, video. Can I just ask, is that even a hot link or is that just like you ha would have to manually type that in? No, you have to manually type that out. That's not like a yeah. link. He oh, so that's not like a link. No, that is, that is him spelling it out for you in the most literal okay. sense. Okay. I'm just yeah, saying. It's, yeah. it's Phil's secret te technique known as the Delta bag. And <laughs> that is there the entire video, too. It's not just a little thing at the beginning. That's there the whole time. <laughs> it is It is the triangle mm. attack of begging. Yeah, that's the three-prong plan right there. That's the three-prong plan. <laughs> yeah. That is consistent. that is gross. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to go on a, a brief aside for this, but just it just strikes me so fucking poorly when he's got this just trinity of garbage that he's giving out. This is gross. Um, in fact, I forgot what he was saying before this. Is there? Is there, before we get back on track and figure out what the fuck is going on again? Um, is there anything anyone wants to say if maybe they remember what he was talking about? We were talking about formatting. I, I mentioned... Um, yeah. Okay, never mind. It was... I, I paused because it was mentioned that he's using Bashinima refusing to send him places as yet another sympathy crutch. Mmm, the crutch. And, and that's where we're at now. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. All the renegotiated contracts, and as of late 2015, I ended up making way less money than originally I was with Machinima Aww. because I had gone into this ad revenue based contract performance ad like everyone else versus views, which is bullshit. Because as a content what? creator on YouTube, I shouldn't have to worry about oh, YouTube did good this month and signed up all those good advertisers, so I should try to pump out more video views this month to get more ad revenue in this month. But this month, I know traditionally they don't get a lot of ads, so I should just not do as much this month. I should be focusing on giving you quality stuff you want to see all the time and not have to worry about that shit. But because YouTube does a horrible job with advertisements have to worry about and real acquiring life. advertisers and keeping them, as we've seen in the news recently, they lost 250 top advertisers because they fucking suck and they don't know what the fuck they're doing because <laughs> they're inept at their jobs. Now the content creators get but they screwed, have your back. right? <sighs> The bottom line is if YouTube had done their job movies. all these yeah, years tricky. and kept the advertisers on YouTube, that initial contract I had with Machinima back in 2011 would still be in effect today. Are you And everyone would be hunky-dory happy. Jesus. Machinima wouldn't have had to seek to multiple yeah, different people to fund though. them or Fuck whatever, them and we'd all be fine. But because YouTube can't do their fucking jobs, we're all in this, this position right now where Pause. a lot of YouTubers are now coming out and saying they can't... Done. Okay. This is Phil's, this is Phil's like, inner monologue... This is Phil's inner child. That reaction is like, yeah, I fucking, I, I was able to throw in a little jab on YouTube and blame it all on YouTube. This is blaming it all on YouTube. What is it, Phil, that, that YouTube did that was wrong to keep the advertisers? The advertisers have their own agency in this. The advertisers are looking out for the companies in which they represent. What is it that you are alleging in 2013 that happened with the average i mean if you're trying to talk about what's happening now with the boycott and you're trying to retroactively apply that to like 2013 14 15 16 then you are completely off base here now again if you want to have a conversation about what's going on right now with the youtube ad boycott okay fine youtube is trying to address it and whatever that's a whole can of worms but youtube in 2013 14 15 and most of 16, uh, I don't really see what YouTube could have done better here to keep, quote, keep advertisers. How is this YouTube's fault? Advertisers are going to look at data. They're going to be like, oh, look, we got X amount of traffic from this, this area and this and that. I'm pretty sure there's a rhyme and reason to why the advertisers behave the way they do. That's why you would see a Pampers commercial on an episode of MTV's Teen Mom as opposed to a Pampers commercial during South Park, okay? There is strategy in marketing research to where you would want your ads to be. And so if he thinks that YouTube is at fault for this, that they should have sweet-talked the advertisers into spending more money than was worth their while, he is delusional. The advertisers have their own specific uh, agendas they have their own interests 
in this. But re remember, Fred, he knows better than you, me, YouTube. He's got a business degree. He knows. He knows things. It, it's He's so out of fucking touch. Right. And that's why, according to his business degree, it's the most convenient to just try to lay blame on the biggest most mm -hmm. you know the leviathan the faceless leviathan yep. just blame google google is not market machinima it's google google is the convenient scapegoat for his ire at this point please let us continue let's find out i'm sorry to cut it off but let's find out exactly how he explains that youtube could have done something better to coax these advertisers into acting against their interests please hit the triangle shape button even do youtube for a living anymore okay so anyway 2015 late 2015 i decided to stay with machinima at that point <clears throat> i guess there is nothing okay about like i said early to mid 2016 i realized it's like that girl who was contacting me all the time about free games and stuff i haven't heard from her in a long time uh -oh. i wonder what happened to her is she even okay so i ended up writing an email one night i was like you know hi you know i know i haven't heard from you in like four or five months is but she you were doing, okay you know, we had a good yeah, relationship we were you were helping me out with games and getting uh, stuff for, yeah. for, for my business i just want to go see go how you're doing and what's going on <laughs> within two days i got a response back not from her from the automated log going. system that i hate <laughs> saying she's no longer with the company please don't uh, send her emails anymore oh that was her boyfriend <laughs> okay that's interesting. Are you fucking dark side Phil, so huh? I said, gee, I wonder. And there were two other people I knew who were with the company oh at that point. I sent them emails. Guess what I got? Auto responses back. Don't send them emails. They're not with the company anymore. And at this point, I'm like, obviously, it's another issue where, again, the employees came in for whatever reason. You know, they were doing a good job. Everyone was happy. And they all got laid off. And it was probably an initiative in 2015. We got to do good work with our partners and we got to help our partners out mm -hmm. with copyright strikes and get them free games. And then all of a sudden, some manager, some upper CEO at Machinima said, oh, fuck that. Uh, I'm going to just completely destroy that program again and lay all the people off again. <laughs> fuck them. And that's what happened. So all my contacts at Machinima in 2016 were gone from the company. Uh, okay. Now, in CEOs particular, have I hadn't but had any issues with copyright or anything major at all during 2016. Space. So I never had to write them for really a copyright strike. Copyright. I never had to write them for anything like that whatsoever. And I never even had to contact the head of the partnership company or the head of the partnership division about anything for most of 2016. It was pretty smooth sailing, no issues. So in that regard, I really didn't do anything there. I do remember, <clears throat> you know, in the summer of... Uh, tw of 2016, I may have written them a log because I had to. Because, again, my point of contact was apparently laid off, a so I had to write them a log in their automated system about why did my views drop all of a sudden? Because ev everyone noticed this in the <laughs> summer of 2016, everyone log. views plummeted, and it stayed that way. It wasn't log. like they went down and went back up. No, they went down and just stayed down. And uh, obviously, YouTube changed something, some algorithm or something. Never disclosed that information, never shared it with anyone, didn't admit it. And I even asked Machinima, Machinima asked, and they got no response from YouTube. So I stopped pinging because at one point, how many times are you going to ask and you're not going to get a response from YouTube? Because they feel like they're so high and mighty and elitist and better than everyone that they could just change their whole fucking website and business without having any kind of disclosure to the people who make I them fucking it, so money by giving them their YouTube. own content. Oh it's so insane that this company operates the way that they do. They're such a, a company with their heads up their own asses. They're so elitist. Because they're all fucking Ivy League. Did this transform into a YouTube no hate video? I've said this a million times before. They think that they're so smart and better than everyone that their changes will always benefit everyone when in reality they always fuck everyone over. But I digress. So all 2016 oh God, we went through. It. It, all right. Now let's talk about the current issue. What well, literally just happened. Why I'm not with Michelle. Uh oh. Because you will not believe oh, this story. Yeah, we won't believe it. Here's what happened. All of a sudden, in February 2017, two months ago, I looked at my channel performance and it made no sense. It told me that there was a spike in advertisement from like, you know, October, November, December, that it went down slightly in, in January, which you always expect. And then in February, when typically ad revenue goes back up, it plummeted. It went half. So it was already down in January. Then it went down by 50 more percent in February, which meant with that amount of money being made, I couldn't pay my bills. All Aww. right. I would, I mean, at that point, you know, I, I hadn't instituted any backup plans or anything yet or any kind of, you know, things to fix anything. And I, did, I literally didn't know if I was going to be able to pay my bills, my mortgages, anything come this month. In fact, this month of April, because I was apparently going to make half as much money on YouTube than I had ever made before. I wrote a log. 
had to write a log because there's no point of contact anymore with Machinima. They all got laid off, right? I wrote a log to their system. How can this be? Why does it say I'm making half as much revenue or whatever? Per the first response I got, okay, from their customer service department, the guy completely blew off my question, didn't answer. He basically said, oh, well, you know, February is a shorter month. And based off of these ad revenue percentages and there CPMs and all of this stuff, it looks like if it had been a, a, a month as long as a normal month, you would have made as much as you did in January, but it was a shorter month. I was like, are you an idiot? I made half as much as I did in January, you dunce. This is completely Ooh, factually incorrect. Shit. Did he say that to him? Question. I went back Whoa, to him and I said, that is not a satisfactory spicy. answer. I want no, a better I, answer. That is not, not that doesn't actually make any sense. You gotta pound the fuck out of I can't pay my bills here. unless you contact YouTube and find out what's Give going on. At this point, I thought maybe it was an watched, error. Like, a glitch. There was actually a couple times with Machinima mean, February where this happened, where they either idiot. underpaid me or you overpaid me. There was one time Machinima, I'm not even kidding you, this is a funny one. They paid me three times more than what they were supposed to pay me one month. Then they realized their error, and for three months they didn't pay me at all. They fucked up internally. They calculated way too much, and then they decided not to pay me at all. Pause. So, Pause. thank God when I got that giant sum of That's how life works. Bill, if you get overpaid, you're not entitled to the money. Yo, shout out Jesus for the Heil Hitler pause. Right. <laughs> that's how life that, works. What, what, you got overpaid, so I should just get to keep it. No. There's nowhere on earth that works like that. Yikes. Okay. Oh, so, all right. So we're starting. This is starting to make sense. This is all starting to fall into place, ladies and gentlemen. He sees that February is not going to be very good at all. He writes a lie. You remember, folks, if you go back in the shit, you will see that he was acting like he was just like actively emailing these people. He made it sound as though, oh, I'm the man and I got these connections and I just fucking hit up so and so. We just go back and forth. Huh, it just seems as though he was just writing a log. It's like anybody else. And he was having some motherfucker who apparently has no idea what he's doing. Just like, oh, you know. Uh, uh, Phil, basically there's less uh, days in the month. And so that explains everything. You dunce, you ditty. What the fuck? I got that shit. And tells him that's not Are a satisfactory answer. <laughs> All right. I mean, but that's not what I want to hear. No. I want you to fix it for me. I want the solution, motherfucker. I want to be raking in the buku bucks again. Look, we can't do that, Phil. That's the answer you're getting. Yeah. So I, I'm i going to just guess here and say that he got real. Uh, what's the expression? Persnickety? Persnippity? He got real persnippity with this uh, with this man. Sure, if you want gentleman. to sound like a look. Got real like snobby. A, oh, come you on. You sound like a little pussy when oh, you say it. What? You're trying to flat. Wait. You're flattening my soda pop there, young man. This man <laughs> got persnippity, persnickety, whatever it is. All right. I'm going to say both so that I'll be right. He did that. He got that. He got snippity. He, he got, got snooty. He got snippity. He got snippity with this snippity guy. Snippity is fun. Uh, and, uh,. Uh, I, I I assure you that this 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 word probably spread like yeah this partner seems pretty irate so you're gonna have to deal with him as he goes up the uh, the chain of escalation. So anything else before we uh, we find out this is I'm so, this this is the fucking this is the uh, the suspense is building. It's this now is the, the feature presentation. Fred? This is the season finale. Fred, I'd actually like to bring some attention to you. Uh oh. Um, Mr. Tootie Two Will got in contact with me where Phil just stated he made fifty percent less, half, in the month of February. Yes. Can we go back to the video where he showed screenshots of him showing he made thirty-five percent less? Oh no! Not an inconsistency. So he could be perhaps inflating the number in particular to perhaps craft a further narrative, his, further his motif. Are you yeah. suggesting that it's Phil famous. would craft a narrative for the purpose of making himself look like more of a victim by this corporate structure of unfairness? Is that mm -hmm. what you're suggesting? That he would craft a narrative? 
How could I would I would never state something so irresponsible from a man who constantly fluctuates necessary information to make himself look better. I would never say that. Nah. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm hype. I'm sure the people here are hype. I'm sure the people on YouTube and SoundCloud are saying, just fucking get on with it already. So let's continue okay, to give some analysis. Uh, I think... No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead and play. Money out of nowhere, I questioned them rather than saying, oh, it must have been a good month this month, and went and spent it, and then next thing I know, I have no income for three months, right? But they peri periodically have these issues. There was one time... Uh, many years ago, this was like three, four years ago, where all of a sudden they just sent me a lump sum of money. I said, what is this? And they said, oh, well, uh, apparently there was a miscalculation on YouTube of your views. We actually owe you thousands of dollars. I was like, sounds good to me. Um, so in this case, I thought maybe this was another situation where the view, the, not the views, but the ad revenue was miscalculated. Maybe it was an error internal. Maybe they could fix it, right, on their end. Ah. And my ad revenue would go back to what it was. So you accused them of ripping um, them off, huh? So that's what I asked. That's what I was hoping for. Were you guys ripping and me off? it took about another day to get an answer, and now it was supposedly this guy who I guess is one of the more senior members of the customer service department at Machinima, mm. and he came back to me saying, Phil, we're going to ping YouTube on this and give you an answer. <laughs> Stop saying um, ping. It does look like, according to what you're saying, department? your ad revenue is way down. Yeah, customer like, service. Like, Phil is a customer. Has higher ad revenue than you. We can't <laughs> In figure quotations. out why your particular YouTube channel may be down and why you may be targeted. From what we're looking at, it doesn't look like you've been flagged as advertiser unfriendly, which would mean that my channel was apparently eyeballed at, at, by YouTube by saying that I'm not a channel that uh, the common people would see or that advertisers would want to advertise on. No I mean, way. Typically channels that are affected by that are political channels, religious channels, those kind of channels. I'm just doing video gameplay, you know what I mean? So that's not super controversial. You wouldn't think that my channel would be flagged. And from what they saw, they said, no, you're not. So let's, let's get answers. I waited three days, got no response. Now, in the meantime, I'm making no money. I'm making like next to no money at all <laughs> in February. And I'm like, where's my answer? I need a fucking answer from these people. Good fucking Nothing. Really. So I finally pinged them the again. Fuck out of Nothing. Them. I ping them again. They finally respond. Okay, well, we talked to YouTube. Uh, and YouTube says that, uh, you know, no, you're not flagged for being advertiser unfriendly. They didn't give us any more answers. We'll continue to ask, but, you know, whatever. I'm like, Dude, this is not a valid response. I need an answer from YouTube. Quick pause. And I know what's going on is they're bringing... Quick pause real quick. There you go. That's a face. You guys remember. All right. I'm going to get... I, I'm going to point this out because this motherfucker, man. All right. You remember the, during this whole time, oh, I'm talking with Machinima, and me and Machinima are going back and forth, and yeah, I'm sending them emails, they're talking to YouTube, they're going to bat for me, and they're going to figure it all out. Mr. fucking motherfucker over here always has to fucking look like he's got the full thing figured out, he's always got to look like he's got the plan, he's the man with the plan, he's fucking, you know, Brian Kendrick and shit. This motherfucker's always got to look like he's got it in the bag. Fuck this little piece of shit, because either one of those is false. Who, it's up to you to figure out which one. Either he's fucking exaggerated right now, or I feel as though he's bitter enough to actually fucking tell the truth so that he can fucking try to throw these people under the bus in his fuck you machinima video. But you remember, back in back when this shit was happening, what he was telling to his people, to his audience, ah, it's all, it's, they're, they're going to bat for me, and ah, they're really stepping up, and I'm talking to him all the time. I'm about to get on this email, and... Going to talk to this guy over here, and they're going to talk to YouTube, and we're going to get this all sorted out, and fucking they love me. They're malarkey. Like, they're going to drop everything for me. Malarkey. This guy's over here talking about he's desperately sending automated fucking things out there and getting nothing back. Meanwhile, he was telling everybody, yeah, no worries, guys, I got this shit in the bag. Fuck this motherfucker. Please continue. You know what he Actually, said earlier. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry, I was I I, I uh, no, brushed no the gun worries. there. No worries. He is constantly trying to contact Machinima to get his answers when he knows that Machinima is telling him they're trying to get answers from YouTube. Wouldn't he perhaps deviate from banging on Machinima's door and go straight to YouTube and? And Phil, don't give me this nonsense about how, well, I can't contact YouTube. YouTube contacts you constantly. You can holler back to them. That's probably what you should have done. 
instead of getting machinima more agitated with answers that they can't realistically give you. <laughs> Look at the cat. So what so what Phil said before is actually kind of inaccurate now. He wasn't really pounding the fuck out of them. He was more pinging the fuck out of them. <laughs> what a ping the fuck out of you. Kind of, but it doesn't sound as intimidating. This motherfucker, dude. Yeah, that, it does, that does kind of sound like a pussified version. Yeah. I just, to pinging. I just, I, I just love the, this, his whole little thing is starting to unravel, right? Um, but yeah, I'll try not to, I'll, I'll try not to, you know, lay down my funky freestyle and then be like, yeah, motherfuckers, and then play. That's, uh, <laughs> I was trying to, <laughs> I was trying to like, uh, emphasize my point by playing. So, uh, that was, that was very rude and, uh, I, I will not do that to my teammates anymore. So, uh, all right. Any other points before we move on? Okay. Get up quickly in like a meeting or a conference call is an aside issue rather than driving it as a priority, okay? So they get a quick little one-off quick answer and that's it. Oh, we got it. Let's send that back to Phil and hopefully that'll appease him. No, if I can't pay my bills, you telling me you don't know what the issue is isn't going to fucking appease me, okay? So I went back to them again and I said, well, this is not acceptable. They can't this tell you information they don't I need you to escalate know. this issue to management. No, just fix I, it and give me a bunch of money. That's all. Week now fix it and give me money. I've been talking through this log system with Machinima log. about having making half as much money as usual. And I didn't get a satisfactory answer. I asked for them to escalate it to management. I waited another day. No response. I waited another day and I wrote them another log and I said, log. you now have me waiting two more days. You still haven't given me an update. Demand I need an answer. Satisfaction. They came back and again, blew smoke up my ass. No concrete information whatsoever. <laughs> and I said, I went back to them again and I said, this is it. I said, you know, Makes I asked you like now twice execute their hold on, hold on, to hold on, escalate hold on. this issue to management. Okay. So now I knew basically they weren't going to do with that. So I said, well, I know what I can do. I can contact the head of the partnership program. Now it had been a while since I Why didn't you do that in the years. first place? So I knew, you know, uh, who knows what has happened within that year. So I write this the guy an email because I have his direct, you know, in my, my contacts. And Are my you phone, kidding I have all me? Direct information. I write him a message and I wait. I get an automated message back. It says, that person is no longer with the company. I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. The guy who was the head of the partnership <laughs> program who helped me out tremendously all through 2015, uh, like, late 2015 with the contract renegotiation and everything, he's gone. Uh, yeah, he's gone too, so they got rid of him too. Um, if you have any issues that you would have contacted him for, contact this guy. So I wrote, I forwarded the whole same email that I had written to, to appeal to help to the head of the partnership program explaining the whole situation. I sent it to this, this other guy, you know, whatever. And that was all I could do, right? The next day, of course, keep in mind, I hadn't been getting any regular responses. Because I had sent this off to this other guy, I get a response the next day, again, from the automated log system, the same guy who's apparently an up-and-up guy at the customer support of Machinima. And he says, <laughs> we've contacted YouTube. They still are looking into it. They still have no definitive answer on what's going on. We've determined you are not uh, flagged as advertiser and friendly, so that's not it. But we're not, you know, we don't have any answers yet. But then they said something. That when this when they said this, that was pretty much it for me and Machinima. Here's what they said. They said, we would appreciate it if you don't go out of your way to write and contact other departments here within Machinima. To basically stay within the lines. Stay within oh. where you're supposed to uh -huh. be talking to us for help on customer support oh. in this log system. And don't you dare go outside and try to contact anyone. Don't you dare. Help. All right. That was it. Oh. Pause. Because literally pause, what that pause, is. Pause, that's... pause, pause, pause. Okay. Oh my. Okay. Hey, oh, he's about to deliver that that fucking hot one. Look at that. That's it's about to be spicy as fuck when it rolls off yeah, the tongue. I was gonna say, Look at that. It's going to be a ghost pepper up Yeah. There. Okay, I just have to say this. Okay. So, uh what they told him is that you're being a fucking pain in the ass and that you're burdening us with this shit. We're working as fast as we can. We don't have a magic solution for you. Your channel statistics have produced this result and you want us to talk to YouTube and just have them magically fix it and just have just have you been paid out if his if his statistics are in this shape okay what is it that can be said to just give him money other than just oh well, here's just some free money so you can pay your bills we understand here's free money 
They're doing what they can, and this fucking guy is unsatisfied with anything that they're doing for him. And they tell him, can you please fucking knock it off and not get the entire fucking team all wasting their time spinning their wheels to try to do this when there is there's literally nothing more we can do other than just try to contact Google, have them look into it. It's not like they can go faster, and Google is not going to move heaven and earth just to fucking get you figured out. It's unbelievable what he feels entitled to. He feels entitled to everything being dropped, every department in Machinima be just dropping what they're doing, 2 a.m. maybe, just stop. Everybody feels in trouble. Fucking DEFCON 2, let's go, scramble. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't just tell him to get stuff then and there. They should have told him, all right, you're being unfucking reasonable that's what well, actually that's what they did they did it in a professional way you're being unreasonable please stop fucking bothering us like what you're doing is not helping yeah. anyone and so har- please don't harassing. continue to escalate this because then you're going to get other teams involved who need to be doing other shit and you're going to get them trying to do this and it's going to be a waste of time because youtube's already working on it you if we give them five different tickets they're probably going to do it in order and they're already working on yours so be patient. How many users are on YouTube? I don't know. I, I saw Google what? Google Plus is like 300 million uh, when I looked the other day. 10. So, yeah. How many users are on YouTube? How many users do you think have fucking issues? How many users are under managed partnerships? How many users are under some sort of partnership? Okay? Just because you are in a situation where your life depends on this does not mean that that entitles you to any extra fucking care. That's your fault. You're the one that put yourself in that situation. You are going to get the same level of customer service, apparently, because he's calling this customer service. You're going to get the same level of attention as anybody else. You're not fucking PewDiePie. You're not fucking Markiplier. Okay? And just because you've been with the company for a long time, meaning just because you've decided to be a fucking piece of shit bum and sit around playing video games on your ass and get paid for it does not make you anything special. You've actually been a burden to Machinima, and you've been losing them money, and they finally corrected you. And when they correct you, God, oh, the nerve of those fucking people, right? It's it, just the most important thing that there is no way that Phil will be able to figure out on his own. Hey, Phil, newsflash. Machinima doesn't work for you. You <laughs> work for them. Mm-hmm. They have absolutely no obligation to just suddenly drop everything. Like you said, move heaven and earth just because you are in a crisis center. And not to mention, you're not going to get the answers faster simply by bothering them and spamming them at the rate that you say that that you're doing you say you had to wait two whole days oh no poor baby my business needs to go on because i need to be under 24 7 fucking ass pampering just because (laughs) i have just because i have seniority (laughs) with this company that i claimed in this very fucking video that i don't work for what do they owe you phil just because you've been with them for i don't fucking how many years no you will get the same treatment that other partners other members of the machinima branch will receive you are not owed anything because of your veteran status and i know that i've been beating that horse to oblivion but it's simply because it's the truth of the matter and rad rad we both know okay this guy is not looking for an answer he's looking for them to say oh we figured it out and we flipped the switch and now we're going to give you all the money that we owe you so now you're going to be fine he's not asking for a cause he's not asking for okay well what's going on with my channel that i can maybe address this and we can work together he's looking for them to say oh sorry we fucked up it was an error here's your money 
Because if they were to tell him something, well, you were advertiser unfriendly. You think that he would just be like, oh, okay, I guess I just, I guess I just won't pay my bills now. No, he's gonna fucking fight them on that too. Oh, advertiser unfriendly. You need to fucking rethink your fucking definitions and all the shit. Phil was looking for a fight. He was not looking for an answer. He was looking for them to back down to him, for them to say, oh, but you're your eight-year legacy. How could we possibly mistreat you? You're like a fucking elder statesman. You're a fucking pioneer. We need to fucking make sure that you're taken care of. He did not want an answer. He did not want this fucking explanation. He wanted a fucking back down from these people and for them to just flip the money switch for him, turn the faucet on for him. That's it. That's what he wanted. Yeah. And not to mention, in other businesses, Phil, your seniority makes it more likely that you are going to be replaced by people that are younger than you and more capable than you. Mm. Oh, he's been replaced that 20 yeah. times over by people that have 10... 10% of his subscriber base. There are young guys doing 10 times more work than him that are more clever, more talented, and put much more effort into their shit than this guy does. This dude is still pressing stop and record to give you that quality content. And oh, by the way, he puts HTTP Teespring. Do you think Machinima would be thrilled to see this kind of video coming from one of their partners, that they're so broke that they need to fucking... That's not a good look for Machinima, right? You, and there's people that are doing as bad as Phil or worse, but they have a little more dignity about it, that they don't fucking just come to you hat in hand and say, oh man, I'm fucked. You guys got to give me a bunch of money because this situation I'm in with Machinima, it's not as glitzy as you think it is. I'm actually fucking poor and living hand to mouth and I can't make it work. This is terrible. This would be like some other fucking company, some other uh, entertainment company or something where their fucking people are out there looking like bums and they're representing their company. Phil is representing Machinima and Phil is also representing the advertisers that would just so happen to be placed onto his fucking shitty videos. And he's doing this. Teespring.com slash stores slash Sons of Kojima or Sons of Kojima, uh, D DSP Gaming. Fucking Patreon.com <laughs> slash Darkside Phil. Plot twist. And uh, he's over there fucking, oh, I need this money. I need bits. I need cheers. I need tips. I need fucking Patreon dollars. All of this. But my content speaks for itself. So, all right. Uh, go ahead, Shad. And then if we have any other ones, we'll continue. I'm sure that people are itching for that fucking exposition. Uh, I was just going to say, he's, it's, it sounds like he's gone about this like just about everything in his life. He feels entitled to the goddamn world. Everything is owed to him, but he owes nothing back. Mm. Everything has to stop and, and, and acquiesce to his Ooh. whims, his needs. Every person on earth, every thing on earth it, it all should stop for him he is entitled to everything he's mm -hmm. entitled to his viewers money he is entitled to every little tiny bit of attention from machinima who you know who have other people to deal with it, it it just comes off as somebody who's never been told no you're not entitled to the world in fact and really when it comes down to it Phil, again, was looking for that magic solution. He's always looking for the magic solution, that quick fix. He wanted them to tell him, we fucked up, and you're going to be just fine. So don't worry about it. Don't change anything that you're doing. Yeah, um, yeah you're great. You're yeah. great. Handsome. We love you. The world loves you. Everybody loves you. Great goatee. And... Mm. Well-kempt eyebrows. I'm sorry, but did his parents ever say no to a goddamn thing when he was a child? <laughs> he comes off the well, somebody. Well, the Wolverine toy, and he fucking yeah. slammed them yeah. ten yeah. years he later. The motherfucking Wolverine toy. <laughs> he slammed He's them twenty Wolverine. years later for that. Mm. Somebody just said in the chat, uh, Russ, uh, 
said, kind of funny, the SOK has 700 more viewers than Phil does right now. Ouch. Um, maybe that's part of the problem. <laughs> maybe that's part of the problem. Phil uh, doesn't because, know. Because we're busy watching this stupid shit instead of watching Phil flub his way through a video game. Well, Rad Rad, you remember, these vlogs have gotten, we've gotten way better uh, results in these videos and a analyzing his vlogs than he's actually gotten in his vlogs. <laughs> so, um, that's pretty cool. So, yeah, you guys yeah. are awesome. You guys are you guys are okay. It, yeah, I, you know. It, it, it makes me feel special that we are worth your precious time. Ah. Uh, well, I'll just take another 15 minutes of your guys' precious time where I can analyze. Go ahead and play. Passive aggressive. That's oh! talking down to me. Oh! That's telling me, treating me like a child. Oh. Like, how dare you try to, you know, do oh, something that's yes! not within these little well, guidelines know. and rules. And well, you, got, you, you are went man, outside though, of the dotted so. lines, right? Mm -hmm. To try to get help. Let me tell because you something, you're acting folks. Like a child. In my lifetime, uh -oh. if I never sought help outside of that one directive road that everyone tells you to go, I never would have got help for anything. And this goes for any kind of job or whatever. And I'm not saying what? that if you're in an established corporate the line where there about? is, you know, a direct line of leadership that you should jump ahead or anything like that but the bottom line you is asked for. you deserve respect and if you're not getting answers and you're not getting respect and you're not being treated fairly by someone you have the right to stick up for yourself pause. and seek out help from someone else and, or seek that pause. respect or pause. you do not deserve respect for nothing you earn respect <laughs> motherfucker oh, shit. you earn that shit <laughs> you don't just get it by virtue of existing Oh, and this again comes to the root of his problems as an adult. Mm -hmm. He believes he deserves everything. A little respect. Zero just it. a little bit. Just a little mm -hmm. bit. Also, you're not being very respectful to the people that you're demanding answers from. Your exactly. Fucking... I was about to say this. How he's not been respecting these people. Is this respectful? What he's doing right now? Yeah, if you're going to be a complete cockhead to people, then they're not going to give you respect back. You know what they will give you? A pink slip. Uh... <sighs> uh, so because... they're going to pull a Trump before his presidency? Respect. Because normally standing up to your higher-ups and giving them what for and calling them idiots and telling them how to run their business that is not going to end well for you regardless of where your employment is you know it's funny for the uh for the promo shout out to the people that enjoyed that i, I wanted to get my weeb credit uh because i'm not a weeb at all but i wanted to get some weeb cred with the uh, persona fan base because i've uh i've slandered them enough but uh I was able to find clips of uh, Phil Slander and Machinima just fine. And as a matter of fact, I went on Twitter and I said, hey, does anyone want to send me some shit? I had fucking tons of people sending me shit. I had fucking, uh, I think like 15 to 20 different clips. Nomad sent me some clips. David Davidson sent me some clips. Tyler sent me some clips. A bunch of people sent me clips all over the place of this guy talking shit about Machinima. He said, fuck you, Machinima. You disrespected me back in the day. He said... He had this one video where he was talking about Machinima he used a video of his for promotion and that he has this in his back pocket now. If he feels like it, he'll slam them and he'll fucking put a copyright strike on them. And then obviously just now when uh, when he's talking about I'm going to pound the fuck out of him and shit. While this is going on, he's making vlogs about them and saying he's going to pound the fuck out of them. You know what I mean? Like this guy is not showing respect. In fact, he's taking apparently... Uh, what he considers to be disrespect from a one-on-one -on -one conversation and he's sharing it to his viewer base and be like, oh, fuck these people. That's ridiculous. Unbelievable. It did, yeah, the complete insanity of that, like, blows my mind. Who the fuck goes up to, like, who is essentially their boss and it's just like, all right, listen, you're going to fucking give me answers, asshole. Or I'm going to fucking like slander gonna, you on social media. I'm going to tell everybody if you don't give me the answer I want, fuck face. This goes to show how um, what a bubble he lives in as well. Yeah. Like in the real world, you act like this. Yeah, you're getting fired pretty fucking quickly. Like the next day at yeah. the most, you're being called into HR and being told get out. You've got about 15 minutes. We call security. They're escorting you off the property. Yeah. 
um, when Phil says he's not employable, I think I'm starting to understand what he's saying. <laughs> it's not. It has nothing to do with his work history, his qualifications, or his time out of the market. It has to do with his fucking attitude, and I think he realizes that. I'm just being honest. I think if Phil is being honest with himself, I think he can realize he is anti-establishment. He is one to push the blame onto anyone and anyone nearby enough to be able to take it. Um, he is not the type of person who will uh, face a hardship and just face it head on. He will uh, put off blame, again, to anyone nearby. So um, I think he realizes this. And as a result, he, you know, he can't fucking, he can't be part of any job especially uh, an entry-level job or something like that where he has to answer to somebody he's gonna be fucking you know trying or, to fucking outwit them and oh you're fucking this and that you don't know how to do your job i know how to do this job or possibly he might have to actually take fucking orders from actual customers and if they don't like his work they can actually tell him to go fuck himself and that mm. he sucks and he just have to sit there and take it and he can't do that yeah you want me to run your fucking drive through for you yeah <laughs> yeah. and this, is, this is the saddest thing because I look at this like Phil is a little kid yelling at his mother having a tantrum on the goddamn floor Ooh. saying that he wants ice cream he wants a toy train do you know what that mother is going to do if you do that in the middle of a store she's gonna walk home She's not going to say anything. She's going to put you in your room. And by God, you are going to get grounded. Ooh. You are That's what she should have done. You are embarrassing machinima with your whining and your crying about these issues that they can't get you answers any faster. So you do have to sit there and wait, Phil. And you didn't do that. Mm. Just want to give quick uh, shout out, Phoenix. Uh, what is it? I just want to make sure I know. Oh, Phoenix Rush eighty five points out this video proudly sponsored by Curse. <laughs> this one specifically oh is is AdSense, but uh, which he's been banned oh. from, so I don't even know how he fucking got that figured out. He's on AdSense even though he was uh, banned as a, as an individual, not just like DSP Gaming. But Phil Burnell <laughs> has been banned from AdSense. So I don't even know how he set that up. But uh, DSP Gaming, oh. proudly sponsored by Curse. You know, how do you think this makes Curse feel? If they care at all, I don't even know if they fucking give a fuck. I mean, they just gave them, they just gave them a dime a dozen fucking sponsor, uh, partnerships. So they, don't, they probably don't give a fuck. That nope. this guy is out here making videos like this. Curse is next. Yo, Machinima did this dude a lot of solids. And, uh, and here he is. Yeah curse you're screwed like as soon as you cut ties with this guy he's gonna fucking just shit all over you he does it with everybody yep he's gonna so fucking, he's gonna fucking make a video about how curse fucking all oh, they gave me so little buddy they didn't help me at all they didn't they didn't respond to anything and they're fucking they're the dicks they don't know what they're doing <laughs> i'm sorry it's hard to talk like that sometimes but uh hey he's gonna curse them out huh <laughs> uh uh, in this in this cursed video, Phil, what I'm seeing is that he is holding Curse hostage. Uh-oh. Slandermania? Phil, Phil is going to work for them, and if they do not like what he is selling, what, what type of oil the snake oil salesman is offering them, mm. he will cut ties... He will give them what for. He will throw them under the bus. Like, like Curse gives a fuck. He'll, he'll do, <laughs> dude, he'll do that anyway. If they, like, just fucking start giving him an ass massage or something, they'll still shit on them once they're gone. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Anything else before we move on and uh, continue on? What What's the time on this? What do we have left, just to keep it in perspective? We are Not at... 51 minutes into the video. So we have so 20, like 20 minutes, minutes left? Yes. All right, the 20 minute warning. What can he possibly have left for 20 minutes? He's, he's, Just, oh my God. 
<laughs> Twenty minutes of, of begging. I've avoided all spoilers on Twitter, so this is this is a complete cold watching of this shit. Right, so I I'm betting I'm betting uh just a bunch of repeats. Predictions? All right, hey, so you know what? Before we go into let's do some predictions real quick. I think he is going to to say, hmm. I don't think he's gonna do fuck you machinima with the finger. Uh, I think he's going to say good riddance, and I think he's going to say that he approached Machinima and said, you guys aren't treating me with respect, and so I want to leave. All right. I'm betting that he's going to just eventually just end up unconsciously doing a bunch of repeat information, uh, give us a little bit of more false information, and then just end it. All right. That and 10 more minutes of begging and plugs okay various butt plugs oh that's nice. <laughs> oh well, when I you put it that way i mean there's gonna be something in there about how he's so much better off now that he's without machinima and he's with terse and everything's looking up because yeah. this is gonna yeah I actually I want know. to piggyback off of somebody <laughs> he might he might actually give a few words of warning to curse me Maybe he might say something, you know, to be interpreted by curse as like, don't fuck with me either. You know, you'll give you'll get the same. Any other predictions before we move on and see the the epic finale? I, it won't be uninterrupted, I'm sure, but before we uh, drive forward into the ravine of this, Lucky Spencer in the uh, in the chat, I predict he says there's nothing he can do. I agree. Hmm. I, I I would have said something, but pretty much every prediction that I had was already said by someone else. So, so make Let's a new continue. one. Make a new one. Make one from scratch, Fazzy. We will not press play until you, you know. come up with a new one. Oh, nice. Uh, I don't know. Well, we can't press Fazzy. play. We can't Fazzy, press just play. Fazzy, just say he'll start masturbating out of nowhere on camera. Yeah. Talk about SoCat. Uh, yeah, SoCat so. will appear out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, from behind his couch and then he'll, give him the backhand. Scooby Doo, he'll pull off his face and it was SoCat. And he's like, it was me, Austin. Front row. <laughs> All right. Hey, Fazzy, should we press play? Yeah aid from somewhere never ever let someone tell you to basically sit there and oh, be the happy and point. shut up like a little kid and sit in the corner and we'll give you information when we get it you know because that's literally what this message said that's what he yes. did with the posting of this video saying don't exactly. you go and talk to anyone else within the company but this customer service line ever that was it yeah, i pulled them back and here's what i said in my message Oh, by the way, they did give me a suggestion as well Thanks in this time. message. With that passive-aggressive message, they said, we recommend you shorten your video length because right now we're seeing your videos on average are 20 to 30 minutes long, but your average watch engagement is much less than that. What we need you to do is shorten your videos so that your watch engagement percentage will go up and hopefully you'll get better ads on your videos. All right. <clears throat> so they did actually give me a good piece of advice. Not to say that it was an amazing piece of advice. It was kind no, of like a, was a rather than a stupid root cause piece of, of the advice. problem kind of answer. But, but I've already covered that. They gave me that piece of advice. And I responded. The first thing I said was, I want you to understand something. This literally is a situation where I'm in dire financial straits. And if this stands where I'm going to be making half as less money on YouTube as uh -huh. I ever did before, starting now, then fuck I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to have all my shit reclaimed. You know, credit card <laughs> bills are going to go default. I'm probably going to have to declare bankruptcy. So you're fine. I'm going to lose everything. And the oh, fact well, that I've now been talking fired. to you for a week and a half and you can't get me an any kind of answer, I have every right as a, a, a fucking respectable human adult to go seek help elsewhere. It's your ineptitude is the reason Jesus. why I have to go seek help elsewhere. And oh, I even said, I said, Jesus. I wasn't going and seeking some department outside of the scope of where I would look for help at Machinima for help. I was going to the head of the partner program who throughout 2015 and 2016 helped me repeatedly with false copyright strikes, with issues against my channel, with contract negotiations. That would be the natural person one would logically reach out to. I wasn't going outside the scope of what I was supposed to be doing. That's exactly what I was told to do two years ago for issues. Now all of a sudden in 2017, you changed your whole structure again and now it's the wrong thing to do and you talk down to me. And I literally said, I said, I feel like you've insulted me. Yeah, and now they're telling and therefore, me. And therefore, I'm going to be honest with you. 
I want you to escalate this issue to management. I don't care if it's your manager, if it's the CEO of the company, <laughs> whoever it is, they need to be aware that this is an issue going on with YouTubers and people under your partnership Just program. you, Phil. And... Yeah. I want you to know that this if you feel that this is how you're going to treat me as a partner, I don't want to be with you anymore. And I said that in black and white writing in this message. <laughs> thing. I don't want to be with you anymore. If you're going to mistreat me and talk down to me and not get me help and basically talk to me like a kid. They responded, Because this K. is my livelihood here. Understand, this is my livelihood. And I ended the message in this manner. I said... I do not want to hear from you again. I want to hear from management who are going to explain to me the situation of what is going on. All right. And that's that. Okay. The next day, I got a message from Machinima saying, and it was from the same guy. So again, it went against my wishes. We have decided to execute our right to end uh, a partnership with you on all of your, your channels. <laughs> Please give legal uh, agreements that we have with you. With DSP Gaming, <laughs> this channel can only be, you know, for a certain amount of days. For for the King of Hate Vlogs, a certain amount of days. And for KO Gaming, a certain yeah. amount of days. So basically what they were saying is they didn't want to be in an agreement with me anymore. With yeah, partner. you're fired! So let's recap you the situation. Got no, him pause fired. before you recap. Pause before you recap. No, 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 no. <laughs> Fuck you with your little hand on the heart. No, 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 I don't want to be mistreated anymore, and if you're going to continue to mistreat me, I would like to be released. And they said, K, because we're going to continue to mistreat you, in your opinion, so we would like you to fuck off. That is what they said to him. Him trying to spin this as a mutual decision is ridiculous. If this was him leaving Machinima, then they would have been, the conversation would have went like this. I am offended that you treated me like this. And therefore, in no, uh, in no uncertain terms, I am now leaving you. Not if you leave, if you treat me bad and then I'll leave you. And they respond and call his bluff and say, hey, you're fired. He was fired. He was not mutual decisionally let go. He was not laid off. He was fired. And so for all the people on Twitter that were just dying to be able to say that little fuckface got fired. Yes, he did. In no uncertain terms, in no fucking convoluted way did this man just, oh, yeah, it was a mutual thing. He was fired. That was the funniest wow. fucking thing I've heard him say in a really long time. Holy shit. Dude. Dude. Can we can we actually get can we get a rewind? Can we get a rewind real quick before we yeah, pause again? Please, let it, I want to I want to hear this again. I want to fucking run that back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the run back. Remix. Try try to stay mute so we can at least let this monumental yeah. reveal sit. All right, I'll mute myself. And that's that. Okay? The next day, I got a message from Machinima saying, and it was from the same guy, so again, it went against my wishes, we have decided to execute our right to end uh, a partnership with you on all of your, your channels. Therefore, here's the legal agreements that we had with you. With DSP Gaming, this channel can only be, you know, for a certain amount of days... For, for the King of Hate Vlogs, a certain amount of days. And for KO Gaming, a certain amount of days. So basically what they were saying is they didn't want to be in an agreement with me anymore with the partnership. All right. Pause. So yes, Phil. Oh they ended Bye. their agreement with you. I are -E you got fired. 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 Fire. You didn't get fired out of a cannon. You got terminated. <laughs> fired. Oh, wow. You are terminated. Oh, you got shit okay. can, buddy. Okay. So let's think back to when he presented this. Oh, it was just a mute. It's, a it's hilarious. When, you, when, you, yeah. when I tell you the story, you're going to get a good laugh out of it because, you know, it was a mutual thing and we both decided to sever our agreement. You got fired. 
Go ahead. There's no way around that, Phil. Ain't like, no way you can, around you, it. You can say so many... You can only say so many things before you fucking spit out the truth like you just did. And even then, you worded it very poorly, trying to make it seem like you didn't get fired. No. You got fired. Fired. There's no way around that. Fired. Notice how he's trying to frame it, though. Oh, I was talked down to, and I was this, so he's still the victim. I stood up for myself. He unjustly. I said, you know Uh, what, if you're going to talk like that, you might as well fire me. Yeah. And in before, like, whatever that guy said to him, I'm going to just take a wild guess and say he, as he often does, you know, borderline paranoia read that passive-aggressive, whatever he's talking about, into the actual email. It was probably just a guy going, look, can you not, you know, email everybody who doesn't have anything to do with this? This is the protocol. Could you please follow it? Which is a normal thing for someone to say. That's not passive aggressive. That's just we have a protocol in place. Please follow. It's pretty simple. Can you please stop being so aggressive towards us? We're trying yeah. to help you. We are the exactly. only chance that you have at getting this fixed. You fucked yourself up by running your channel the way you have. We have no no bearing in that. The way your channel yeah. performs is up to you. It's up to your audience. What did we do? We literally just pay you for what you do. We're yeah. not we're not in the business of promoting people and shit like that for for smaller channels like you. You got yourself in the situation and then you come to us at a moment's notice and within a few days you want us to reach out to a giant corporation like Google, specifically YouTube's branch of it. And we would like for you to find, and you want us to just get you this magic answer about, oh, we'll just flip the switch and just give you money out of nowhere, just out of thin air. And so he's being aggressive to these people. Oh, I don't even, he tells the guy, you insulted me. I don't even want to hear back from you and you better fucking escalate that shit. And if you're going to fucking treat me like that, I don't want to be here. And they say, K and fire him because they don't want to be with him either. I said, mm, okay, get the fuck out then. Capital K, period, is their response to when Phil says, oh, well, you know, if you're going to be like that, then I don't even want to be here. K. So yeah. Yeah. You can sugarcoat this all you want about how poorly treated you were, how you weren't given top priority Phil Brunell, you got future endeavored. They came to terms. No muffin basket. They came to terms with the release of Philip Brunell. Mm. We wish Phil the best in all future endeavors. Uh, Come on. No, go on. (laughs) No, you and then I will throw in the little bit. Okay. All I was just going to say was... Ah, oh, come on, what do you mean? I'm, I'm just sticking up for myself. I'm not having this shit. You, you'll either move faster, or I'm fucking sick of it. To which Machinima responds with, Okay! Honey, is everything okay with the money? Yeah, everything's fine. I'm, 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 I'm just dealing with something right now. Oh, okay, because when you were eating dinner, I went on your computer and your emails, they looked like there was something wrong with the money. No, 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 everything's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm getting more money, I promise. Oh, well, if you'll look at this line graph here, I'd actually like to point out your dividends are actually 30% less over the quarter than they were last quarter, and I'm actually concerned about the potential cash fall here uh in this next in this next quarter that 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 graph is just upside down okay look at it the other way around and then you'll see that it's fine okay Ah, i see well um i hope that you're able to turn this around or else i'm gonna be turning around and going right back to pennsylvania god damn it now that fucking engagement rate won't be any good and oh what about the ring did you get the ring Oh, uh, what, 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 what ring? I, I didn't say anything about a ring. What are you talking about? <sighs> Old time's sake, huh? Uh, yeah. All right. Is there anything else we want to cover before we move on and talk about uh, and see how Phil was just so terribly slandered and salted and how he was besmirched by this band of thieves known as Machinima? Oh, my. 
All right, well, guess we're gonna have to play. So let's recap the situation. Let's show. Let's go ahead, Phil. I let's did nothing do wrong. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> In violation of yes. oh, yes. oh, being advertiser oh, yes. friendly, all of a sudden, yes. I literally started making half as much money as, as I usually did. Oh, no. It was to the point where I was afraid I was going to lose my house, my job, my livelihood. Everything was going to be repossessed. My life was going to be fucking ruined. I didn't have a backup plan to fall upon. Uh -huh. Okay. I contact Machinima for help for a you week a and a half. Who's they give that? me the runaround and don't give me any answers whatsoever on what's going on. They didn't have they them. they refuse to hold YouTube accountable and get answers from Accountable. YouTube. Then I go to a contact who I had already had from two years running as a contact of someone who's helped me and told me to go to him on these issues. I went to him, was told he wasn't with the company anymore, and then I was scolded by Machinima for talking to the guy that I was told yeah. previously yeah. should be my point of contact for issues like yeah. this. That's you the got down to like a fucking child. Yeah, talk so down. So I went down to like Machinima and said, if that's how you're going to treat me, I don't want to be with you anymore. And they released me from my contract. Yeah, so they fired you. I asked he basically to be released. No, you didn't. No, pause. No, you didn't. No, no, pause, pause. No, 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 no. No, no, you didn't. No, you fucking oh didn't. God. You said, you basically tried to be like, oh, please stop treating me like this or else I'm going to do the only thing I can and threaten my position with you guys. That was not them. If they would have continued to treat him like that. And then he said, okay, well, I'm fucking leaving. That means that you fucking told them and then you left. You were fucking fired. They were told by you uh, if you're going to do that, then I'm going to leave. And they said, no, you don't hold the fucking cards. We do. You provide nothing for us. You are a burden, an embarrassment. You provide nothing. Good day, sir. That was already a different spin than we heard, like, less than a minute ago. He's managed to spin it a second way in 60 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Yeah, Who the dude. fuck else can do that? Yeah, that's some Nicolas Cage shit, dude, because that was gone in 60 <laughs> seconds. Ridiculous. <laughs> Mr. Oh Philip has goodness. no idea of how the real world works because you can't simply walk away from an extensive contract because guess what, Phil? It's a contract. You are contracted to fulfill a certain amount of of days it is up to the contractor to get rid of that particular contract right. it is not up to you yes mr rad rad them do you remember what he just told us about oh i only have 30 days to figure out if i'm going to enter into a binding contract with you guys and that's not enough so i need an exception so i can figure out if this contract was so loosey-goosey like he's trying to say now where he could just simply send them a spirited email and be like oh, i'm out of here bitches don't you think that he would not try to make a big deal about, oh, they're going to try to renegotiate me and they only gave me 30 days to figure it out. So I had to reach out frantically to anyone I could and reach out this, make this exception so I can have two months to figure it out and shit like that. Now, this motherfucker was under a binding contract. As a matter of fact, when he talked about the benefits of curse, he said there is no contract. He specifically went to talk about it, about how it was such an outlier a difference from his previous situation to say that at curse there is no contract and I could leave whenever I want. Da, 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 da. This guy is a liar, a shyster, a fraudster. He is trying to flim flam you. Yeah. Unbelievable. And this fucking narrative, despite the fact I'm surprised he even said any of this shit, to be honest with you. But he acknowledges <laughs> that they just said, well, as per our agreement, we're deciding to fucking let you go. See ya. And he's over here, arms outstretched to his sides, like, hey, I fucking told him what's up. I fucking walked out. I was like Tom Petty. I stood my ground. I won't back down. Fuck this fucking son of a bitch. Anything else before we fucking... <sighs> Absolutely. Feel um, better not. Yeah. Tyler, go ahead. Bill better, Bill better never engage in gambling, otherwise he's gonna get his bluffs called. Hmm. Yo, he went. He pushed all the chips in with a fucking seven high. 
And he that went, was the he, end. He put an all in plus the deed to his house. And he's like, call it bitches. <laughs> yeah. So with you everything we've with everything we've heard in this near hour, this man has the brass fucking balls mm. to say to his audience after everything that we've heard that he did nothing wrong. Nothing. All the times where he pounded the fuck out of his company <laughs> until he got the answer that he wanted being incredibly unprofessional mm. in the matter. No, he did nothing wrong. Going to departments that you weren't supposed to go to when they can't give you any stronger answers than you could have gotten. No, he did nothing wrong. Disclosing this to the public. No less. Oh, absolutely. No, he did nothing wrong at all. And let's not forget that this is an issue out of Machinima's hands. He, they are the middleman. Phil has the issue. And YouTube is the unreachable leviathan of corporate fucking red tape and bureaucracy. And he needs to relay his bitching. And Machinima is the only one that can do that for him. But it's not up to Machinima. Machinima can't shake YouTube, Google by the fucking ankles and get his little fucking shekels out. Okay? He is pissed at Machinima for something that they have no control over. He has his contract. He has the figures of his contract in in writing what they are entitled what they are obligated to give him. And they're doing that. It's, it's something on YouTube's end with the way that he did his channel, whatever. Did we ever get a solution to this? I, I, I mean, I'm sure Curse is such a better fucking representative, right? I'm sure he could just hit up Curse, right? And figure out what's going on. In the end, it all boils down back to it's not really that he really thinks it's Machinima's fault. He just doesn't want to admit that he put himself in this fucking inescapable, shitty situation in his life. I didn't put myself in this financial debt that I literally cannot get out of. You need Machinima? to save me, Machinima. He did nothing wrong. He did Fuck nothing wrong. That. Fuck that. Fuck that. The fucking goal on this guy. I did nothing wrong. For once, a little bit of humility, a little bit of responsibility in your own life. No. I would, I would fucking donate to his Patreon today if he turned around and did show a little bit of, of responsibility for, for his troubles. I'd be that shocked by it all. Oh, my God. He threw a temper tantrum in a toy store because he didn't get a Wolverine toy, but he did nothing wrong. Yeah, he told him earlier, he's just like, look, you don't understand. I literally am in trouble. I'm going to lose my house. So? That's not our fucking problem. We're exactly. paying you. Why do we have to fucking pull you out of this situation that you put yourself in, idiot? Okay. Anything else before we move on? The home stretch, ladies and gentlemen. Only about three more hours to go. Let's continue. My contracts. That's what happened word for word. What kind of a fucking company? Oh, boy. Would anyone want to be... Who would want to be with a company... Who would want to be down with to someone you? like who you? Who would tell them that like you've been you. insulted? They just face say, well, fuck you, and they throw you away like that, right? They it's insane. It. That's ridiculous. That's one you of the worst things out. you could possibly do. Wait, they do. threw you, you away? Do, especially me. I've been with oh, them since 2011. They didn't! They didn't. They didn't just throw you away. They well, just told Chad, you. Chad, Chad, no, 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 no. You're right. No, house. Chad, no, Chad, no, 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 no. Oh. They didn't. They didn't throw him away. He walked away. He, he took the advice oh. of humongous. Oh. Just walk away. He just walk away. <laughs> That's what he did. He just walk away. That's it. Humongous what? Humongous what? He just walk away. That's it. He didn't. Chad, how dare oh. you? Tried to say that they oh, threw yeah, him, they, they disposed of him. No, he stood his ground. He stood up for himself. He, 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 he showed them the power of, of, of 
taking that hate and turning it into some sort of photosynthesis like fuel to fuel the rocket ship forward through turning youtube it into a, some lead weight that he's tied to his ankle and thrown in the sea come on oh my god ah, he this guy he stood up for what's out. right he he did not get tossed away. So what is it though? Just real quick, I, I'm I'm starting to I'm starting to lose track here. And usually that happens when there's bullshit aplenty. There's some fuckery afoot here, ladies and gentlemen. Is it that he walked away, or is it that he was tossed away? He was thrown away. He was dis he was he was discarded. What? Wait a minute, I don't understand here. They so did they fire him? Did they lay him off? I think that I think that's the more proper thing. Is it? Is that he was being uppity with them, and he tried to be like, "Oh, if you don't do what I want, then I'm leaving." And they said goodbye. Is that a, that's laying off? I guess I didn't know. Did you guys know that that that's actually uh, an amicable split when you give a company an ultimatum and they say, "So you." And they tell you to get fucked. Or... Yeah, they tell you to get fucked. <laughs> Dude, and that it... was impress. That was fucking impressive, though. Thirty seconds only, and he completely changed the narrative of his story. Hmm. And then 30 seconds again, and it's different. He has the power to make you immediately forget the thing that he just said within a nanosecond. When all this shit went down, the f one of the first things he said on Twitter was that it was a mutual departure. Both parties are completely okay with never having to see each other again. And now here he is to day spinning the narrative once more to fit his situation here is uh somebody uh told me to check the uh youtube comments the top comment right now antimania says didn't you say you quit machinima but in the video, you directly say they chose to end the partnership with you. Can you please clarify? I'm a little confused. Phil responds, or sorry, the King of Hay vlog responds. Uh, <laughs> I told them I didn't want to be a partner of theirs anymore if they were going to treat me with disrespect. They responded by saying, okay, then our contracts are over now. So they literally admitted they don't want to treat people who partner with them with respect. Oh. With respect, off, yeah. they're that stupid. Fuck off. Yeah, that's Bill. that. That's what that means. That's Fuck. What, that's what that off. means. Yeah. Bill, holy shit! You are a terrible mother because you didn't get me a large vanilla cone with sprinkles on it, <laughs> like I asked you for. There's actually wow. more. There's more. Here's another one. Uh, I have one arm. Says you literally said, "quote If this is how it's going to be." If this is how it's going to be treated, then I don't want to be partnered. There was no out of the blue. That was them taking it in a business sense. Uh, the King of Hate Vlogs responds, I said I didn't want to be partnered with a company that insulted me and mistreated me. Then they severed our partnership, admitting publicly that that's what they do to their partners. This is, this is amazing. Then they this severed is... our partnership, admitting publicly that that's what they do to their partners. Yeah, that's out of the blue because the vast majority of companies on planet Earth wouldn't publicly admit they're awful. What? <laughs> I'm going to explode. Like yeah. my head's just going to pop. Yeah. Oh, here's another one. Here's another. Here's another. Uh... Oh, okay. I don't want to give a spoiler. We're going to we're going to loop back to this. I might screenshot it just in case it goes away. This okay. is oh, I accidentally got a spoiler. Damn. Oh my god, I am it. I am so excited about that spoiler though. Oh my goodness okay. gracious. Um, let's see. Here it says Phil is talking about it 17 minutes in. Phil is talking about the PewDiePie Levy situation where PewDiePie's action caused Machinima to lose Levy's as a spot oh Levi's, sorry. Levi's, Levi's well, Levy's. I just I didn't understand what this was. Levi's situation as a sponsor well, whom they relied on so heavily, they ended up firing several staff members and asking people to take a non-legally binding contract. So if you refused to sign, they couldn't dock your pay. Also, the Machinima partner thing never existed. Machinima set up a separate network to put partners they wanted to be protected by this in future uh, protected by this feature in anticipation, but YouTube never implemented it due to mass complaints. And then Phil says that they really did exist. 
Uh, hi, you got fired. Uh, nice sideburns. Maybe just coincidence, but I googled. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just looking at Phil's comments. Okay, so that does it. There's one spoiler, but uh, boy, am I excited about that one. Uh, okay, is there anything else to uh, lambast before we continue? I can't. I just can't. Shad, do you think we should press play? Yeah. We can. We can do it. It was like I was a newcomer and I was being a dick and I was being demanding. I was yes, the opposite. You were. I never Actually, really went to machine. I, I, had, I had the clout. Games. I never work. asked them for free stuff to go to trips or anything. I never asked them for advertisement promotions. You asked them to take I never down our videos. Any of their crazy programs that got them into trouble. I was like the poster boy of success for machine. Oh, what? Right. Yeah, I always no. kept my nose no. clean yeah, no. in that regard. Yeah. Wait a minute. You, and you fucking for them, after six now? years, to basically say he's just a nobody and blow me off and then insult me for talking to someone who was a previous contact of mine, fuck that. Like, go the fuck, get the fuck out of here. Now, of course, I did some research. After all this happened, I said, I've got to do some research. I got to do research. Wow, for once. Jesus. I found out, ladies and gentlemen, that in 2013, some fan sent Machinima's this. management got shaken up, and basically they got taken over by the CEO. All right, I'm not going to give his name or nothing, but I did some research on this guy. Born with a silver spoon in his mouth, went to Ivy League schools his whole life. Parents paid his way, by the way. Okay. And, uh... He's on the board of directors of a million different companies, which means there's no way that his actual full attention is given to Machinima at any one time whatsoever. Okay. Right? There's no way. When you're on a board of directors of a bunch of companies, you're constantly involved and intertwined with their issues and things. There's no way that you could possibly be involved of full force in the company that you're supposed to be the CEO of. Okay. This guy is basically the antithesis of everything that I stand for. I'm a, a mm. believer in hard work. I'm a believer oh, in yeah. jealousy. Earning your way. Oh, I was a person who was incredibly intelligent. He doesn't even want to get a fucking job. Possibly go hard to work. Schools, and I was told, no, I couldn't go because I needed financial aid. And they didn't want me because they didn't want to give me the financial aid. If I'm white and smart, I can't go to Ivy League school unless I'm rich. If I'm a, a, a legacy oh, the or I'm rich, I can go to Ivy League. Like, yeah, since pause. I wasn't rich, I was denied. I applied to two Ivy League schools, and both of them literally said, you're declined because, you know, financial aid issues. Wow. Isn't that nice to know that in America, if you're rich, you can stay rich and go to Ivy League schools and be on the board of directors of a million fucking companies and make horrible decisions? I mean, let's face it. Let's look at Machinima since 2013, all right? All these, you know, the advertisement promotion with Xbox One where they didn't properly disclose anything, they got into legal trouble, right? Um, ran out of money, therefore had to seek more funding from other companies and have these influxes, in, in, injections of money from Microsoft and YouTube to even stay alive, right? An initiative after initiative that sounds good and then it canceled them all and lay all the people off, right? The company that's in constant disarray and constant chaos that doesn't know, it literally is like it's bipolar. It's a bipolar company. It's a, it's almost a schizophrenic company where there's multiple personalities within it. Well, okay. I want to have us be, you know, strong for our partners. Well, I want to be a company that makes a series about Halo and, and, and so fucking it, uh, Mortal is Kombat. Oh, well, I want to have our own failing? YouTube shows that are popular. And they all <laughs> argue with each other, yeah, override yeah. with each other, like different personalities yeah, bouncing yeah, around in a schizophrenic's um, head yeah. and no one knows what the hell this company is supposed to be. So how could you ever have success with a company that has no definitive identity you can't i only went to business school for four years and i fucking know that Wait a apparently minute. the ceo on, of pause. machinima Hold it. okay phil is talking about machinima having no uh definite identity phil have you seen yourself the past couple of years you yourself are struggling to find yourself an identity sure you fucking make nothing but raw gameplay videos but uh, other than that you have gone through so many things simply because they don't work out for you. What happened to Phil Reacts? What happened to KO Gaming? What happened to... I don't know. Literally anything on the KO Gaming channel. Anything... Uh, anything like that was thrown away. Like, completely down the drain. Simply because it wasn't making you profit. And you're here... Trying to badmouth Machinima for doing what you're, for doing what you've been doing for years, Phil. You are actually fucking retarded. Oh. Do you hear the words that are coming out of your mouth? And do you <laughs> recognize the fact that you are completely fucking asinine with what you are saying? This man, I swear to Christ. 
right. You know, it's not just me who's like choking on rage and aneurysms. Can I just right? point out that this man says that he believes in the value of hard work, a man that, that be... is doing everything. Oh. A man. Okay. All right. Hold on a second. Let's 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 actually talk about this just for a second, if we yes, would please. please. Yes, believes please. in the value of hard work. Hmm. I see some pretty hard work there in the lower right hand corner. I see some pretty hard work there in the upper <laughs> in the it. upper center fucking area there. You mean you mean the hard work of your fans creating designs for you and you profiting off of those and shilling it at every fucking moment? You mean the hard work of typing in the chat just today? The things just haven't... Let me read it verbatim, though. I feel like I'd be doing a disservice just to paraphrase it. I just feel like it would be much more impactful uh, if I was just to read this directly. And, of course, because this was just today, it's in my recent notifications. So I'll find this uh, lickety-split here. People love this fucking quote, in fact. Uh, here is the quote right here. The quote is... Oh, wait, hold on a second, a second. God damn it. Fine. I'm no. sorry that oh, this is taking well, a long time. Well My is... phone fucked literally fucked up right in the moment here. <laughs> well, while, while Fred pulls a Phil, I would like to bring something up to the panel. Phil talked about how Machinima has no identity for themselves. And he continues to name drop all of these unique original series based off of video games, such as Halo. Um, I think I, th I would actually like to correct this because it was actually Halo Forward Unto Dawn. All right, I've got it for whenever which you're ready. Which is what, which is what Machinima covered. He talked about Mortal Kombat. Um, I know Machinima had a Mortal Kombat series. I know they had a Street Fighter series. They are using these video game franchises to create film mm -hmm. it's not the exact definition but they are making machinimas ah, off of almost video game seems, series seems like the name of the the namesake there machinima yeah. huh. like technically a machinima is using like animated film using in-game software right but it still sounds like machinima knows exactly what they're doing unlike mr one philip burnell now back to this notion of fucking hard work okay this is the man who said just today in the chat let me let me read this for you <clears throat> so just for the record all and i was sitting there and i was thinking to myself what's he gonna say i thought he was gonna say oh the vlog is canceled or some shit he says the last two streaming days have been pretty bad. Very low cheering slash tips slash subs. Sucks, I know. Don't really want to have to mention it, but I'm hoping for things to pick up today. Somebody tells him, you can't force it though, Phil. We will donate when we want to. Phil says, yeah, I know. I can't force anything. It just sucks because I still need to pay my bills. This person says, so do we though. We have bills too. And then he dropped the conversation. That was the end of that. Yep. This is the value of hard work. This is a man that believes in getting out there and earning your living and putting in a good day's hard work while he sat there and played Persona 5, which Tyler and, and Rad Red, man, isn't, doesn't it just hit the spot to come home from an actual job, sit down, relax, unwind, and play a little Persona 5, huh? Oh, dude, I've been fucking... Okay, for like the past full week, I've literally been coming home from work and just getting my life sucked away with mm. Persona. I love it. Mm. And Rad Rad? I actually have a different story here because I didn't have any time today to play Persona <gasps> 5. Wow. Because um, I had a job that I had to get ready for. A what? A, a, a job so you were playing on stream you were you were pronounced that you were, no. oh, so you were no. you were playing on twitch right we were bits job. and cheers and... well well i was i was using a computer today but it was not to play a computer game mm. it was to enter mm. data into a registry it, so it's like, kind of a did you put your did you put your teespring link at the top or what kind of data did no. you enter in 
I mean, it's it's a kind of game where you, like I said, it's it's a it's a it's called data entry, huh. where you uh, insert data into a registry. I mean, it's not very involving. It's kind of a boring thing to do, but you actually get rewarded by the game itself with actual currency that you can use in the real world. Mm. Now, do you input this data with the controller, right? I mean, it's... Um, there is... Are quick time events? Or... Uh, no. No, it's nothing like that. It's but you do, have to, you do have to press a lot of keys. Oh, keyboard and oh. mouse. So it's PC gaming. Well, it's actually just... Yeah, I guess you could say it's a little bit of keyboard oh, there you and go. mouse. So there you go. See, Rad Red knows the value of hard work. He plays PC games... And streams them, and he gets tips and donations and stuff like that. Just like oh. Phil. Phil understands the value of hard work. Phil understands yeah. what it means to just be a man and to, you know, to, to make things work. You know, it's not about passing off your financial responsibilities onto other people or, or going off and starting up different campaigns so that people can pay off your obligations. It's about, you know, doing what Phil does, right? And buttons. And I would love to just drag him to Australia just for one day and take him to one of my twelve-hour night shifts. I, I, that would be a fun experience. Go, no, all right. <laughs> you but, have uh, you have nine patients. They're all immobile, bed-bound. Everyone's incontinent. Um, get to it. Mm. Oh, they're also all unbelievably sick, so I don't let them die. Mm. Try that but, shit, motherfucker. I'd actually like to I emphasize will. that this is this data entry thing. It's the type of situation where you have to do really well or you have to meet a certain quota mm. or you might not be rewarded. Well, your ad revenue heavily. goes down? or that... I, I, I guess it's something like that. You might not get any ad revenue at mm. all. That, that sounds like... That sounds quite a lot like my job. If you do a shitty job, then you end up getting paid less or fired even. Seems like you work Fire. for some nudniks. Yeah. You should contact them directly and tell them if they don't respect you that they should just let you go. God, I, I, I can't be fired in this job thing. What will I do with myself? Hmm. Well, all sarcasm aside... uh again just the fact that he has the stones to say that he doesn't believe in a life of leisure he believes in working hard shit like that uh, this guy plays video games all right what my point was that what what Fuck. people like to come home and do what from a day of work they like to unwind they use that for their entertainment they use that to relax mm. he does this and calls this hard work just keep that oh. in mind ladies and gentlemen Dude. And he's and he's not even that good at it either. <laughs> he's Dude, probably one of the though, worst. Go ahead, Tyler. If I had the, I would fucking switch jobs with him for like a month for Persona though. Oh my god, dude. Mm. If I could if I could play video games all day for like just a month, oh, I'd love that right now. He's almost at seven seven. Oh, dude, yeah. he's that's fucking sucks. I couldn't imagine quitting at that point. Oh, man. Yeah, man. Oh well, boy. Sense. He's, that's you know he's gonna get fucked over in the line of duty. You know what I mean? Oh, fuck that! I can't believe he said that. I just, I can't. I can't. I'm sitting here just shaking my head. I I oh feel like that before I went into this, there was nothing this man could have said <laughs> that surprised me <laughs> in the least right. bit. How dare you! You underestimated Mr. Phil. I would like Mr. to Phillip. tell the person, I'd like to tell them myself of 12 hours ago that yes, this man can sink below the earth and get halfway to China. Can we also just say real quick, this guy is trying to be like, well, I'm white, so unlucky me. I, I just don't have the oh, same opportunities oh. in life that others get. I mean, listen, we know that... Fuck we know that this is a situation uh, in America where they want to diversify the colleges and stuff like that. Okay, fine. But for him to just act as though this is something that completely disqualifies him to higher education is ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. If he is not competitive 
with the field that he's not going to get selected. Okay, if you are a if you exceed if you excel, right? If you can perform, you'll get in. You'll get in somewhere. This man's like, I, mean, I, I just I heard I just heard that. You know, being a white guy, I'm not going to get in anywhere, and so I just decided, you know, not going to do it at all, so. Yeah, yeah, so I, why bother? I didn't bother trying, but I believe in hard work. Yeah. But I'm white, and I don't have money, so I didn't bother trying. I just figured, nah, I just figured I just wouldn't do it, just because, you know, so. Yeah. This, this hard work is not going to get me anywhere in life, <laughs> but I did nothing wrong. <laughs> is there anything before we move on and finish it up sweet I'm only, going inside only six more hours to go yes <laughs> okay let's go listen this Ivy League educated fucking bonehead who's rich off his ass who's on the bonehead. board of directors of a bunch of places fucking thinks hell. that he knows how to run this company <laughs> yet all they've done is fucking fail 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 since he became the CEO <laughs> So I could tell Look you what the happened here. They, How has your business been going, they, Phil? For some reason, yeah. oh no, we didn't Look make a ton of money. They the just why don't you look at the top of the guy screen who's the, the bottom, program for me. Right of the they screen. got why rid of him. Tell me how your business is going. Let's fuck him. Let's get someone new in here. And by the way, I actually found out fuck the new him. head of the partnership program at Machinima. Guess who he is? He's a guy who's a fighting game community head. And literally, since he's become the head of their partnership program, you know what he does? He goes to fighting game tournaments, and he promotes the tournaments. And that's pretty much it from what I've seen. Like, he's really heavily into competitive fighting games. No now, everyone way. knows wow. the competitive Support fighting the FGC, games hates me. Unlike you. Because I speak out about their, their bullshit all oh, the time, yeah. especially in 2016. Oh, yeah. The amount of, of times that I've You're just a whistleblower. Fighter five, right? Yeah. So, if anything... You just said the game right, sucked. That's it. The issue going on with the ad revenue it's all stuff conspiracy. at it's, Machinima. It's, it's all and me making... All he said was he doesn't like the game. That's and went to that guy, which they should have, he probably said, oh, I know that guy. Fuck him. He talks shit about the fighting game community. He talks shit about Street Fighter V. We're not going to help him. I, you know? And it's ridiculous. Oh, it's a conspiracy. I like see. Like I said, I Shut never did a thing wrong with Machinima. In, in there, I never violated a policy. I never did anything wrong I never wrong did anything that, wrong. Ever. And neither all did I they. Did was try to what did they stick do? up for myself and keep myself afloat and not have my business fall apart. Yeah. And then we treated with yeah. such disrespect God. The jerk was the last machine. straw to which i said i don't want to work with you anymore if that's how it's going to be and then they they cut me from he, the he contract basically. The wrong oh, no, 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 it was no, mutual that's honestly i said that's it if you're not gonna camera. step up and help me i don't want to be with you anymore and they said okay and then they released me from my contracts and that's what happened with machine that's not okay. what happened here now it sucks um, because Machinima had me in this managed partnership since 2013, and honestly, since this happened, since I'm now no longer in these contracts with Machinima, left. guess what? Hundreds of my videos have now been claimed. Uh -huh. I mean, hundred, if not thousands at this point. <laughs> my great <laughs> auto playthroughs, my any any playthrough of WWE, any sports playthrough that had licensed music, um, random videos here and there, like two two critical videos for my Final Fantasy 15 playthrough critical. recently. Um, my Walking Dead playthroughs, all random stuff because the random music are all getting claimed because I'm not under the protection of a managed partnership anymore. And it's bullshit. Um, so it sucks. They literally hurt me and by mistreating me. Oh, piss off! And then cutting Wait a minute. Pause. What? Fred. What? Fred, I'd like to bring something up with you. Uh... There was a instance where I'm sure you remember it just as well as I do. Uh... Phil stated... Maybe there's someone in Machinima that's trying to fuck with me. Yes. Remember he said that yes. he's been targeted and he that he's been he... targeted. Yeah. Is this fighting game guy? Is that, is that what it is? That they say, oh, fuck Phil. We hate him. Let's mistreat him by telling him, please don't continue to fucking cause a scene with us. We're doing what we can. Please don't try to, like, involve more teams and have more manpower wasted on this thing that can't possibly move any faster. How dare you disrespect me and insult me? You're supposed to do what the fuck I say! They yep. hurt. They hurt me. Holy shit. You are not a victim, you piece of shit. You brought every <laughs> inch of this on your own head. Oh, my God. Uh, this is mm. insanity. This is lady, ridiculous. Lady, gentlemen, what we are seeing right now is Dark Side Phil coming full circle. Dark Side <laughs> Phil, Dark Side Phil gonna Dark Side Phil. 
Let me TSP, tell you something. TSP started playing competitive Street Fighter, and the FGC eventually wanted no part of him. Mm-hmm. How fitting is it that the person in charge of his fate, of the company that holds the very fate of his livelihood in his hands, supports the fighting game community? How about that? I don't I don't buy that this was some conspiracy against him. This is so convenient for him to say this. Yeah. I believe that he fucking talked his way out of the hearts and minds of these fucking people and they said, Get the fuck away from us, dude. You yeah. are unreasonable. We're doing what we can and you are treating us like slaves. You are being disrespectful and you are insulting us because we are putting time and effort into fucking fixing your problem that kinda isn't our problem. Yeah. And you are being ungrateful and impatient and pushy and insistent and insulting us and trying to tell us that we're not doing a good job when there's literally nothing more that we can do. Once the email is sent, we wait for them to respond to us. And this man's acting like he was insulted. Now, I don't think that there was some aspect. I think this is just the fancy little thing at the end to be like, oh, the FGC fucking hates me. And that's why, because there's some fucking home cooking involved. I don't believe it. I mean, you know, you can believe what you want. Obviously, I'm not going to talk you out of it. But I'm just saying, I, I think this is a pretty straightforward case. That he fucking got mouthy with them. He gave them an ultimatum. And they called his bluff. They said, dude, we're, we don't have to deal with this anymore. Just get rid of him. To be brought down by someone in the FTC. This is a smorgasbord of both irony and karma. He, oh, it's if it's true, it's poetic, for sure. Yeah, but he wasn't, I don't, I, I agree with Fred. He wasn't brought down by one person. There was no conspiracy here. This is yeah. just, he is reaping oh, what he boy. sowed. He is reaping what he sowed. And he, as usual, will not accept that any of this has anything to do with his actions. With his actions. That's right. Yeah. He, he's he been saying this for years, that he refuses to accept defeat. That the people that hate on him make him... Motivated! motivated. To, work. to work. That's right. To work hard. What fucking work? We've been hearing this same sob story for years. The rhetoric. That's and the rhetoric, has... Frederick. And it has brought him <laughs> to his lowest low. Mm. Fired by Mashima. Yeah. Anything else before okay. we finish on this? Let's finish. Let's oh, let's do it. <laughs> finish let's him. Finish. Like that the way that they did. Oh. But you know what? The bottom line is this. Since I left Mashima, here's what's happened. I feel more independent. I feel more driven uh-huh. to do fun stuff <laughs> i'm now focusing more on twitch on e-begging on YouTube. yeah what fun yes, stuff my video have you done? i'm a slave to messages and I say he's a slave to bits and chat, tips you know what every day i'm having far more fun no you're it not than I did and here is the truth no, the not. entire time that i was with machinima not once ever did they do anything for me in regards to helping me grow my channel to helping me become more popular on youtube they it was featured always, project oh, seven wrong they then fucking we'll try to help you. Oh my god! Right. You know the they sent you to E3. Oh my play. god! You got false copyright strikes. We'll try they to get you the free shit. Up. But never was I ever. Co- they claimed our videos for like ad revenue for you. One call I got from Machinima was, "Gee, why don't you become a yeah. game commentator for tournaments instead of making my YouTube channel better and turning it into something that's going to be long-term successful?" And I was like, "What the hell kind of call is this?" You know, so. It's so it's weird, the experience of It's a wake-up call. I've had big successes. Diversify yourself. there's been tremendous for failures. Life. And the fact that this company never, for the internet, ever could fuck. be coherent. They always seemed schizophrenic and chaotic and always people in and out the door. I could never have That's the same point of contact for more than a few months. Get words and then these last few days, you know what like, I mean? The last few months where no, what a horrible falling out where they don't want to help me and they're, mm. you know, dragging their feet and they're basically insulting me to hell with that. What know? is this insult? I would rather be with a company that's not going to respond at all than a company that's going to basically talk down to you and treat you like a kid. What? I can't contact someone who's <laughs> oh, helped me dozens of times in the past couple of but years. But you did, but he like doesn't this. fucking work yell there. Talk down to me like a child. Go. Oh, fuck yourself. Oh, the, yeah! I'm the yeah, one who operated a successful YouTube channel. 
Me. Re. I'm the one who. Re. Re. He re. Base. Me. Re. I'm the one. Not you. You're the company that just. Yeah, took a cut yeah, of ad revenue and protected me from copyright now, issues. Why don't it's you not get some grandiose thing where you're better than me or you know better than me. I'm the one who put the content on YouTube. All the content creators of YouTube are the ones who made the site successful. Not the partnership companies, not Google or YouTube itself. The content creators. We're the ones who should be treated with fucking respect. It's insane that you would ever be talked down passively, aggressively. Oh my God. Get, get, get over it. You, you Whoa, yeah, it. double. Because the yeah. bottom line is, they're not worth that's your time. They're going to disrespect you. And they're gonna that's the fucking it. thumbnail. That's, that's the thumbnail, dude. People who worked for Machinima over the years who I was very friendly with, they dude, never had this issue. They were very respectful. Like I said, that Oh my that God, that's the thumbnail, dude. Amazing. Double bird. They helped me out tons, and you know we had a great relationship, and they were sending me free games. And then it all ended, probably because that fucking genius silver spoon in his mouth CEO. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, game. yeah. Not money. Yeah, Fuck he them. directly yeah, fucking got rid of you. you. Lay them off. Yeah, and that's lay the them off. Exactly. It's not just, that's oh, one thing you got to understand, this is too. so good. It's not just machinima. Oh, it's he's like this. so jealous. Corporations do this America. all the time. Why do you think I was laid Hold off on. from my job, you know, in 2010? I was getting... Oh you know, my god. It's, it's immaterial. It's not related. Oh, beyond, I had this actual document, this, this thing. It was like a diploma that they said that you should But you were doing shittily on Machinima. And and in two shit, months, they got rid of me. At the time like, of are you the kidding me? departure. And that's how these the corporations firing. are. And that's how all these companies are. They see it as like an asset or a tool. And that's fucked up. Yeah, you are a they got to realize that there's a human factor when it comes to this business. Yes, I know it's business, but there's a human factor to the business as right. well. And for someone to be treated like that, no, it's, it's not worth it. Yeah, you mean that employee that you fucking emailed via harassment. It's not worth it. And you know what? Now that I'm, I'm focusing more on Twitch, and even though I'm not in a managed partnership or whatever right now, I'm far happier doing it. And you know what? Enough of that shit. Don't ever let someone... <laughs> You're lying you to like yourself. That. Seriously. Yeah, you but, look uh, it. <laughs> so that's the deal. That's what happened. I know. That's crazy. Out of nowhere... Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's yeah, funny. Not help being mistreated you you from still a look like shit, me bro. You're not fooling anyone. Anyway. What a funny oh, story, guys. But... That's what happened. Oh, that's yeah. God's honest truth. What is story, you know? I got a good laugh. If there was anything there that I'm I wasn't supposed to, I didn't tell you any ad revenue numbers. I didn't tell you any contractual agreements. Nothing like that. No. He just threw the whole fucking shit under you, the yeah. bus. Yeah. 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 That's why I was very general. Yeah, I, I wonder tell why you about you're how much not I made or anything like that. But yeah, it's it's been a crazy ride. And you know, the ride's over now with Machinima, now with another company and Honestly, you know, I, I haven't interacted yeah, with them at all. Ride, I'm not in a managed partnership, so even if I get like a copyright strike, I don't even know if Curse can help me. Oh, no the words of warning um, to Curse! The bottom line is that the copyright strike issues and things on YouTube are, are so different now because now those false flags and everything don't really work anymore. So people trying to do, oh, a piece of fucking fan art, get that. It doesn't really work anymore. You know, oh, you know, any kind of impersonate another company and put in a false copyright strike. YouTube now finally screens all that and i you know it's a, i'm sure people have tried it and i haven't gotten any so i don't really think you need that kind of hand holding management anymore okay when it comes to youtube now <clears throat> some people have said to me I'll, I'll finish the video like this okay i said phil if you had a falling out with machinima you're not with them anymore why and you're not in a managed partnership why on earth are you with another partnership company okay why because it's way different because on YouTube. A lot money. of people now don't even because I need the money. They just go with Google AdSense. Because or I'm not allowed to be on um, Google AdSense. Well, I I can't no, no, because necessarily I told people about answer AdSense the question. And I they think and me. originally I did apply for Google AdSense on DSP Gaming a long, long time ago. We're talking you are banned game. from there. And I'm almost positive that it yes. was denied because they said it was at that point gameplay related. Content no, you're a liar. Advisable. You were banned. Now, I don't remember. If that had something I to do with it, then remember. I, I monetized my oh. vlogging channel, The King of Hate. He's a liar! And in two months, YouTube shut that channel down and said that they saw they found click fraud. And I was there like, well, you go. Me doing the click fraud. Oh, yeah. There's obviously other people. Oh, yeah. I can't stop people pause. from doing it. No, YouTube no. didn't care and pause. they shut down that Pause, channel. pause, pause. No, nice no. pause. No. This man got in trouble because he did a video where he said, hey, thank you guys. If you want to help me out, click the ads and make sure you watch the ads and watch extra ads. He was instructing his viewers how to defraud the AdSense system that he was on and he got fucking banned for that. You can go look yourself. There are Google fucking forum threads where fans of his are making threads begging for, Mich for Google to let him back into the AdSense program. This man is lying to you that, oh, I don't know what happened. He, there are video, video evidence 
This man is instructing his fans on how to fucking mac to game the system. And he got banned for that. That's what he got banned for. And so that's why he needs that fucking partnership because he's banned from AdSense. Not just DSP Gaming, not DSP Classics, not any of that shit. Phil Burnell, the person, is bad from Ad- is banned from AdSense. Don't let him tell you anything different. And he knows why. Please continue. Channel, but I'm almost positive that was the same AdSense account that was associated with DSP Gaming. So basically what I would have to do is set up a new AdSense account, a new everything, and try to start from scratch and get all that set up. Honestly, it was easier for me to just contact Curse and say, listen, I know you're going to take, you know, a cut or, or whatever. Uh-huh. But if Curse. you could just quickly monetize all my videos for me. And by the way, Curse offers me a lot of the things that I had with Machinima. Like I had this partnership with a company called Audio Micro that gives oh, me yeah, that's music real important. my edited videos. Uh-huh. Now that I'm with Curse, I could still use that company. So I liked that. I was getting, you know, royalty-free music Yippee that I could skippy. use in my videos, and I could continue to do that. If I For didn't do that, I couldn't. I'd have to go doing. seek out my own music. Yeah. When I do reviews and stuff, countdowns, year-end series, they'd have to be, like, silent because I'd have to find music that's not royalty-free or that's, you know. Oh, a I quick YouTube search for royalty-free? Uh, things out there that you can use. Oh, okay. <clears throat> So there are Such benefits a hard worker, though. to be yeah. with royalty curse. free now, music. By the way, YouTube the other search. thing a lot of people don't realize: the curse partnership is very open ended. Unlike Machinima, where you're always tied into a contract. Wait, what? What? Time, what? Curse basically says the way that we pride ourselves. I thought it's open ended. Partnership is with good Machinima. enough to stay with us. But if you want to leave us at any time, just submit a request and you can leave. So if uh, ever I get an offer to be in a managed partnership again, or I get an offer for more money, you know, a better ad revenue percentage. I can jump ship from Curse and no, you know, no harm, no foul from them. That's what their company says up front, so there shouldn't be an issue. So, in this regard, More. things are good right now. Yes, YouTube ad revenue is still down, way down, but because I'm doing good on Twitch, it's kind of making up for it. And what I'm going to see within the next month or two is the money I actually make between YouTube, between Twitch, between the tips and stuff people are giving me on streams, between <laughs> Teespring. <laughs> Which I got to advertise Make now. Good end. That's helping me out. Oh. A lot of things are all coming in. Patreon. Patreon. Which obviously still helps me out. All I called the sources. Oh, and I make as much money as I used to before the ad revenue dropped. You did. And pay my bills and keep my house and keep everything. Right now it's looking good. I don't want to say for sure, but right now it looks all right. Uh, Let's play it by ear and see how it goes over these next few months. Let's play summer. it by what but I tell right you. Right now, my severing of my partnership with Machinima, me is being complete, fired, and the fact that I'm not under a managed partnership, even though it sucks because it looks like some things will be affected, won't massively in the long run negatively affect me. I don't think. If anything, it really sucked because it happened at the time when I was playing Zelda. And Nintendo claimed all my fucking oh, Zelda videos. I would have made way more baby. money in March playing <laughs> Zelda if I hadn't had those videos claimed. But they were all no, claimed by wouldn't. Nintendo because Your I was Zelda a person, not with Machinima tank? anymore. Like and that answer. really sucked. So, yeah, Machinima fucked me. Machinima <laughs> no. did fuck me in that regard. But it is what it is. They I wanted to leave me. anyway. After I got disrespected, that was it, man. Dude, I, there was no way I was going to stay I with them and put up with their anyway. bullshit. Especially because I wasn't getting answers or anything anyway from them. So what was oh, the fucking point of staying with them at that point, right? All right, folks. Did you get yeah, answers story, now? My history with Machinima. Do you have the answers now, that though? You do and now that you're you a curse? Know. At this point, I'm happy to be somewhere else, and I'm happy to be doing stuff the way I'm doing. So let's stay positive for the future. Let's stay away from negative bullshit like that. Uh, and, uh, what? Thanks for watching. Negative you know, bullshit. Super long video. Hopefully you found it informative and enjoyable. And that's it, folks. See you later. Peace <laughs> out. Sorry. The thumbnail is unbelievable. Look at that. Look at his bug eyes. Okay. Uh, what? How? What do we even do? How? Where do we even go from what here? What just happened? I, I know. I know. Right? I know what I want to do. Pop the top. Drink? Give that fucking video a round of applause. He went in every direction. He went in every direction. Every which way but loose. I can't. This broke me. I'm, I'm really... not sane anymore. That just left me confused. My mouth is kind of like still open. Like, being like, what the fuck just what happened in that video? Mm. Yeah. So what let's did we just watch. Let's recap. I... All right. Let's give it a little recap, Aruski. <laughs> Phil had an up and down relationship with Machinima that was in this video described as basically completely negative. Uh, he then got a little too mouthy and desperate based on the fact that his entire life revolves around him making money on YouTube. 
he was not willing to take no for an answer or we are sorry, we don't have an answer yet for you as an answer. And he became irate and pressed some fucking employee who probably didn't even have a fucking, you know, hand in the matter until they said, you know what? See you later. At that point, he, and you guys remember, he's completely leaving out that emo stream he did where he's like, oh, I don't know what to do. Should I become a Twitch streamer? I'm definitely not going to get a job. I mean, he leaves that out. He goes in there and he fucking gets a desperation fucking thing. He was talking about, I need to fucking, I need to get right away. There was no period of time where he was like, oh yeah, I'll just get applied through AdSense. He said, I need a partnership right a fucking way. He needed that because he's banned from AdSense. And so the only way that he can get money off of YouTube, which he desperately needs, by the way, he's a cat, is by using fucking partnership programs. And so he does that. The reason, of course, why he doesn't want to lose the partnership or the ability to make money on YouTube is because that is what pays his bills primarily, even though he's doing this Twitch thing. But even now, okay... Phil does not have any answers, does he? I mean, he's with Curse now, right? I'm sure that Curse, I mean, he can just drop an email and, hey, guys, uh, you know, you guys love me. I'm so handsome and stuff. Why don't you guys uh, just shoot over an email to uh, YouTube and uh, tell me what's going on with my channel? No, Phil has, es has essentially accepted his fate that YouTube is in the toilet. You know, the way he talks about it now, oh, YouTube is fucking ruined, and uh, I need to go to Twitch now because YouTube just isn't profitable anymore, and he talks about YouTube like an afterthought, okay? He knows what's up. There was no fucking magical answer, but he was pissed at Machinima for something that they did not do to the point where they told him to fuck himself and go away. And at this point, embarrassed... He has to be like, ah, oh, you know, I mean, the thing is, is that YouTube just fucked up. Google fucked up and, you know, YouTube just isn't profitable. And so I need to go to Twitch it so you can give me the bits and give me the tips and give me the Patreon pledges and buy my t-shirts. That's the recap, ladies and gentlemen. Who else, uh, who else got some shit for us before we get out of here for tonight? Go He's nuts. apparently a hardworking man who's nothing but a goddamn victim because society... I can't. Somebody else go first because I'm still trying to put my head back together. Well, this was... video absolutely lived up to the hype. Oh. And Phil was right. We would not believe the things that Machinima <laughs> told him. I don't believe No, it. I don't believe most At of it. At all. <laughs> I don't believe the majority but, of it. It was like, okay, it was like a half hour of just like bullshit recap. But then the last 40 minutes or whatever it was was just like all historical revisionism and then just like random stories that suddenly changed in 30 seconds or some shit. Yeah, he became revisionist on something he'd said like like a minute before. 30 seconds. No, one one yeah. of them was literally 30 seconds only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I... I think I, I felt like something inside my head explode when he talked about his ethos of being, I'm a hard working mm, piss. Mm, he values, off. he wants to get his hands dirty, get the in there. The value of hard work. Get some calluses you, on those hands. My God. What the hell? <laughs> the one thing that I want to hear. And I know it's not going to happen because it's in their rear view mirror. I'd love to hear Machinima respond to this. But they're, they're, it's probably not worth their time to even bother. I Just, I don't know if we could get a comment from Machinima. I, I, would, I, will, I will try. Um... I don't. I mean, I just, I just don't know if they would be willing to put themselves in that position. But I mean, I, I will, I will try. I mean, it's, it's gonna be really hard though. I mean, I mean, unless somebody knows somebody at Machinima that knows somebody that knows somebody that can maybe get to the bottom of this. But like, me, I mean, what can I do, right? I can try to call them or fucking send them an email. I mean, you know, I, I don't know how I can 
get in touch with him. So I don't know if anyone knows uh, anyone at Machinima. I, I can I can try. I think I know a couple people that uh, maybe friends with some people. So uh, I'll give it a shot, but I can't promise anything for sure. I mean, it's a five percent. 1% chance that it'll actually happen, but I mean, we'd be happy to give them a platform. I mean, you know, we could we could uh, get their side of the story out there, and so uh, it'd be interesting. It'd be very interesting to uh, to see their side of it. Um, I'm blown away. I but, I thought mm-hmm, that the story yep. was going to be um, I don't know. I thought that I thought that at least he was going to present. I'll give him credit. It seems like he did tell the truth he did he didn't have to say the whole part about oh you know well no i can't even give him credit because he tra- he still tried to spin it like oh i, I stood up for myself yeah. and they said well fine the the way that he's just saying it is if you're gonna treat me bad and insult me then i don't want to be here and they said no we would like to treat you bad and we would like to insult you and so therefore the deal is off that's the way that he presents it you know yeah, no one does no company does that like no one yeah they're the bad guys he's the good guy he's just a victim he's just a he's trying his best he's a working class hard working man oh for fuck's sake yeah who the fuck do you think you're fooling at this point i am blown away that somebody else took him i mean i i don't know if curse does zero research i don't know if they even care I mean, who knows? I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna just assume the worst out of them. Maybe they just don't know, or maybe they just, maybe it doesn't matter to them. But like, if I'm if I'm anyone at Curse and I caught wind of this video, I would think to myself, okay, well, look, either we cut him now, and he says some shit about us that's just like, yeah, they just, you know, I didn't have much history with them at all, and they just decided to get rid of me, or they have him on there for a year or whatever, and then he puts out a video like this. Machinima's in the title of this vlog, right? It has to be, right? Uh, I think it was six years with Machinima. Yeah. Something, something. Years. So it it's basically and, yeah. titled like an expose. You know what I mean? Um, and so... An autobiography. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, a year later or whatever, Curse will... Uh, if they if they end up out of business with Phil, it'll end up like this. It'll end up exactly like this. My year with Curse. Oh, my the the curse upon my channel. Some shit like that. Some snazzy wordplay yeah. about how it was a curse on his channel. This is how it is. It's how it rolls. I've said this. Several people referenced this throughout the video. I maintain this. This is you can bring this to the bank, my friends. You. Or anyone you know cannot do business with Phil and come out clean on the other end. One of two things is going to happen. Number one, he's going to fuck you over and you're going to get sick of it and you're going to end the partnership. Number two, he's not going to be able to fuck you over and he's going to get upset and he's going to end the partnership. Either way... There's some fuckery afoot, my friends. And he is going to slam you on the way out. Look at everyone he's done business with. He can't even have a fucking... He can't even have an internet line with Comcast without slamming them. I'm surprised we haven't heard about his cell phone provider. AT&T or whatever the fuck he's with. That he's not doing rant videos on that. Give it time. Machinima. John Rambo. Respect the Pact. Howard. Chris. Chris. Chris mm. Both Chris's. Mighty Furtado. All these people have done business with Phil. The moderators. His parents. His parents. His better parents. yet, better yet, Aggie Plays. Aggie who Plays. Was a fan oh, of his. That poor girl. And, well, that's, got, yeah. and got him to do voice acting for him out of his he busy said, like, schedule. Two lines. You, out of his busy schedule. You cannot get involved with this person. And come out clean on the other end. He is going to somehow drag you down. He's either going to try to throw dirt onto your name. He's either going to try to take you for all your money. Or he's going to try to fucking slander you. 
and get his fucking audience to be pissed at you like he tried to do with Rambo, the moderators, respect the pact and shit. It's just how he is. So. I have one final thing that I'd like to get out of this video. The floor is yours. We... You, got, you got the last word, my friend. Yeah. Yep, it's a, it's it's not a rad rant, so <laughs> so put your guns down. What we've learned from Phil is that throughout his life, he's nothing more than a poor white man who does not get the opportunities that other people get, whether they be in college, whether they be on YouTube, and this young man is going to stamp his feet and show that he deserves better simply because of what he brought to the table. He said it himself in this video. He was one of the pioneers of Let's Play. That, that instance obligates him to all the benefits of people who went ahead of him and went beyond his capabilities. And he feels this. He shows absolutely no sign of shaking from that particular stance and it is causing him. And the most damning thing about it is that as he is living this streaming life, as he's living this gamer life, he is getting older, and it is becoming much more difficult for him to seek life outside of this bubble. He has no intention of doing so, and once that bubble bursts, he's going to land on the floor in a grassy green field with nothing around him. He is running out of safety nets. His friends, his partnerships, and the fall is going to get even worse from here when you consider that people are constantly feeding his addiction with the cheers, with the subs, with the tips, with the buying of the t-shirts. You, my friends, are causing this individual to stay in business and I hope you realize what you're doing to him in the process what you're turning him into but it's he did nothing wrong and that's, that's all I have away. to say yep that that's the takeaway line I think from the entire video I did nothing wrong that is him in a nutshell he's that's... going to burden his fiance with all of this and he did nothing uh, wrong i could go for miles about what he's done financially and he's done nothing wrong any person as phil puts it any person of an intelligent human that watches this video. I could show this video to my brother, to my friends, to my parents, who I had to spend when I wasn't working preparing a luncheon for their anniversary. Mm -hmm. And I could have spent more time doing that. Instead, I have to talk to a brick wall for three hours, for three and a half hours, because that's what you're dealing with right now. Curse, if you can hear me, that's what you're dealing with right now. You may not seem like you care about the matter. You're talking to a brick wall. He is a fucking stalwart in this regard that he's making all the right moves despite the fact that he has several sources of revenue that he borrows from his fans, he's making all the right moves. Mm. And that's that. Uh, are there any other final comments before we get the fuck out of here for tonight? Sounds good. Ladies and gentlemen, 
thank you very much for showing up Ooh. here tonight. We very much appreciate it. We uh, we always give you the shortest of notice. This one was unreasonable because this fucking guy, I mean, his his eight le- <laughs> eight year legacy. He still doesn't know how to work fucking YouTube. He couldn't upload a fucking video and then either leave it private or had it scheduled to up to to fucking go live. Yeah. But uh, so this one it was kind of out of our control. We were you know trying to get something uh, of an idea but uh but we very much appreciate you guys tuning in on such short notice thank you guys for showing up uh as somebody commented earlier in the stream there was uh way more people here than at a phil uh get together and uh god i still we love you guys i still can't figure out why this happens why we're so lucky but uh yeah we very much appreciate it thank you guys very much for all your support uh, for myself, well, we'll do the we'll do the the proper send off. Uh, Mister uh, Mister Tyler Hansen, where can we find you? What have you been up to? Been up to getting my life taken over by Persona Five. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at thmb69. Perfecto, Mister Rad Rad. You can find me on Twitter at the Rad Rad, and you can find my abandoned YouTube channel. <laughs> at youtube.com slash s i went w e born right now persona 5 has taken over my life and i will say this yet again it is a good game buy it and play it oh shit mr fast fuck you can find my twitter which is ttsvb1 you can find my youtube which is freddy fast fuck and you can also find my twitch which is also ttsvb1 where you know what? Maybe I'll stream over the weekend. Who knows? Oh my goodness, Miss Shad. You can find me hanging out on Twitter at Fraulein Shaden. Sorry, I had to put the two bits of the word around the wrong way because some bitch got there before I did. We're gonna fucking track her down eventually. <laughs> no, she's a person with good taste. We'll get, get her on the podcast. <laughs> and of course. Myself, Mr. Fetcher Fox, you can find me on Twitter at T I H Y D P, the acronym for This is How You Don't Pressure Some Fucking Intern Answering Your Emails Until the Fact That You Got Fucking Fired and Then Try to Say That You Walked Away. Unbelievable. Uh, you can also find me on YouTube. I have two different channels. Fred Fox will get you to both of them. One of the channels has an animated avatar. That is where the shenanigans happen. The DSP tries it style videos happen and so on and so forth. And there's a non-animated avatar. That is where uh, more, I guess, polished things will go. Like uh, this is how you don't play Scarface. Uh, DSP tries being a man part uh, two, but definitely not part three because that doesn't exist. Um, and uh, yeah, th- that'll do that if you want our content our quality content and geez why would you want to do that let's say for example that you were somebody that came here late and you needed to figure out what did the sons of kojima rant about uh during the beginning portions of the video well there's a number of different ways you could do that first of all if you only want the audio if you just can't stand seeing phil's face or our nifty logo that Taurus drew. Uh, you can do the audio only. You can do soundcloud.com slash the Sons of Kojima. You can do iTunes, uh, Sons of Kojima on iTunes. And uh, I am going to work my hardest to get those two audio only things done, I don't know, uh, a couple hours after the broadcast. Um, those will go up immediately. SoundCloud and iTunes go up at the same time because they're they're codependent. So that's your audio only. You can download those. I had a couple of people ask me. You can download iTunes. Obviously, you're probably familiar with that. But uh, you can actually download the the MP3 straight off of SoundCloud. So if you just want to like rip it and take it with you, you can do it through the app and you can do it through the uh, website. There's like a little download button. So um, yeah, you can. It's your shit, man. Who cares? You know, you can just rip it, whatever you want. Um, the uh, YouTube, if you are an OG, you want the tried and true method, the classic audio visual experience. Well, you can go to youtube.com slash whatever combination gets you to Sons of Kojima. You can maybe just type in Sons of Kojima. <laughs> I would never ask you to subscribe to any of our stuff. I mean, I have a, a pretty long history of never doing something like that. But uh, let's say that you want to get that quality content. You can do that on YouTube. Easy peasy. That will be up uh, pretty soon. Because i got to get the fuck out of here uh, tomorrow and through the weekend. So I'm going to try to get that done ASAP. So you'll benefit from, from that. Um, I think that's it. We've, uh, 
We've had a wild ride here. I want to thank the panel for riding with me so late and for so long. It's always a, it's always a blast, obviously. Um, and, uh, yeah. This is, uh... Huh, this was one wild ride. All right, again, thank you guys very much for joining us. It means the world to us. Thank you very much. Um, we love you. Go fuck yourselves. Good night. night. I, did, I did nothing wrong. 